to look for. Sugar- this, this is the this is the team play gap. You look at this. This this is this is inexcusable. Seeker pops Sojourn Ultimate so early that I'm pretty sure Adam and Eve are hanging around. What should happen right now if you're Primus Tornado? Just kite. You're you're look at how there's look at how far away they are. Look at the number of chokes. Nobody's using anything. Like this is the freest Maywall disengage. And yet we just sit around. Well, here comes the over. And look, 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 we, like, is even kind of like half pushing. And then just Sam just walls late, Sam dies, and Kaluj holds a lot of responsibility for this as well, because Kaluj is screwing around as well. This is really bad. This is really bad. This is the nerves, this is the, the, the fumble, I don't know, you know, what this is, but it's bad. Some of the best Overwatch that you're going to see in a while. And very, very exciting match. Some really exciting maps. Um, I didn't catch most of it, actually. I, I missed most of the match. Um... So I'm I'm really excited. And obviously featuring some of the, the biggest names in professional Overwatch. We have obviously everybody knows Hydran from uh, Toronto Defiant. Been around the block a few times. Sam as well, Toronto Defiant, uh, historically. Largely considered one of uh, NA's best flux DPS players, if not the best flux DPS player in some time. Um, obviously contesting that point is Sugarfree who's been the new up-and-comer, had a really nice season with Vancouver Titans. A lot of people think that he should have gotten Rookie of the Year. Um, Kaluj, somebody that has was historically an off-tank player, but has migrated into the main tank realm going back into 2022. Done that role relatively well with the San Francisco Shock and had a halfway decent season with Toronto Defiant as well. UV, historically known as the best in a flex support. Now contesting that is Mr. RuPaul, fresh off of an Overwatch League championship with the Florida Mayhem. OG, uh, one of the Toronto Defiant, again, one of the original American Tornado GOATs, uh, one of the best main supports, maybe the best main support in NA for some time. Uh, and then contesting that as well is recently has been Vega, who's one of the new kids on the block. Not exactly new, but definitely one of the newer pop-offs. Um, word on the street is that this guy was in high demand and, and last season, uh, and some teams weren't unable to make it work uh, with some of the visas and stuff, but really, really, really phenomenal player uh, on the support role. Obviously, Seeker with the LA Valiant, uh, probably their best player this past season. Really great hit scan, up and coming streamer as well. Pretty good dude. Very, very good hit scan. Very good sojourn. Uh, and then finally, Hawk, who, in my opinion, is the best Western tank uh, uh, of all time, can, with only one exception being Super. I think Super and Hawk are easily the best uh, Western tanks of all time in A or EU. Um, certainly the best, I, in my opinion, the best off tank of all time. Um, and currently the best Western tank and has been uncontested since Super has retired from professional Overwatch. So um, Hawk is, uh, in my opinion, not only phenomenal at the off-tank characters, but he is probably the best off-tank into main tank conversion. Maybe not the best at Winston, um, but whether it's Reinhardt, whether it's Ramatra, um, a lot of the more traditional main tanky style characters, Hawk is really, really quite good, um, has a little bit of that flexibility, and is largely considered, in my, in my opinion, is probably the best Doomfist in the West. Um, um, Phenomenal Doomfist, phenomenal Duncan Queen, really, really, really phenomenal player. Uh, and he's also a great shot caller too, so provides that sort of value. Um, so I'm a big Hawk fan. I, I feel bad for him after the season with Atlanta Rain. Uh, I think he had a reasonably good season for the opportunities that he was given. Um, my cat is walking on my keyboard. Um, hey. He did a fine job for, for the opportunities that he was given, um, but you know, unfortunately... It is, it is, it is what it is. So yeah, uh, these are all the players here. Uh, I would say that really the big thing here is like, it's, this is like, I would say a mixture of the new kids on the block with these kids. Uh, I would say Vega definitely being a new kid on the block. Um, Seeker being a new ish kid on the block to an extent. Uh, and then players like Sugarfree and RuPaul are not exactly new kids on the block, but are kind of like the up and comers kind of coming into their own uh, regarded probably as the best in their role nowadays. Um, but that wasn't necessarily always the case. Um, Hawk is the old guard, but is a phenomenal player. Can you actually move my suit too? Because she's being she's being a, a pig about them and is walking all over my keyboard. Yeah, she's being very naughty. Um, but Hawk has been good for for years and years and years and years. Um, and then I guess Primus Tornado are, are not exactly the old guard, uh, but certainly maybe have, fallen, have have come on some hard times and are now actually facing real competition for the first time. Um, 
not for the first time now, but you know these guys were historically considered the best in the role for for a long time. Uh, and, and nowadays, that's not quite as much. I would still argue that Ultraviolet uh, is probably the the most competitive for his role. Um, I think maybe Hydrant as well to an extent. I think Ultraviolet still is a phenomenal flex support. I think he actually had a really good year last year for the most part. Um, so you know, I, I think, but I think a lot of these other players have have had have had struggles and have had some hard times. Um, so yeah, this should be very exciting. Now, the the thing that makes this also exciting is that this is a not solved patch. This is a new patch. Uh, it's only two weeks old, not even two weeks old at the time of this play. Uh, so there's a lot of changes. Obviously, the Ramatra changes were huge. Malga is not playable. Um, there was a lot of like little tweaks, minor tweaks to support. Uh, obviously, Symmetra lost 25 HP. Uh, a lot of little things here, the Tracer buff, stuff like that, which have kind of shifted the meta a little bit. Bastion has received a couple more nerfs, obviously, at this point in time. And I think teams have kind of realized that you don't necessarily have to play Bastion and Brawl anymore, which is obviously phenomenal news because now we can actually see a lot more DPS and crucially, a lot more tanks. Now, I'm not a Ramatra enjoyer, uh, but Ramatra was absolutely screwed by Bastion. You could not play Ramatra into Bastion. He's, he's the worst Brawl tank into Bastion, uh, hands down. Uh, because he's he's too squishy and he doesn't do enough damage in Nemesis form and Ramatra needs to play around Nemesis form. But with the recent buffs to Ramatra, with Bastion kind of falling out of favor, teams have actually been able to move into the Ramatra brawl. And I do think Ramatra is an extremely strong tank right now. Um, I'm going to be looking at some of the POVs from their streams. Uh, potentially, I may or may not have a few of uh, the POVs recorded already. Uh, so um, one of the players on Timeless sent me the full list of codes. So I recorded a lot of POVs. Um, I also got some of the Kevster POVs from the EU final. So stay tuned. We might be doing some of that this Thursday. Um, you know, maybe I should make an announcement about that, actually. POVs command? Let's add a, let's add a POVs command really fast. On my, uh, hang on one second, chat. Uh, commands add POVs. I have Hawk, Seeker, RuPaul, and Kevster POVs for analysis either later tonight or on Thursday. Stay tuned. Yeah, so... That's pretty much it. We'll talk a little bit about the macro and the matchups because uh, I think they're very, very interesting. Some of these have developed a little bit over time. Some of these are playing into character strengths. Um, to, be, to be honest with you guys, this is still, again, relatively early in the patch. The meta is not at all solved. Uh, so it's going to be like a, uh, we don't really know exactly what's meta. And obviously with, <laughs> with Malga coming in, that definitely is a huge, huge variable thrown into this as well. So these may be the last times that you see these compositions for some time. So let's, en let's enjoy it. Now I'm going to have the audio on just a little bit in the background. Let me know what you guys think of the volume. If it's too distracting, if it's too loud. How is it? I'm going I'm to I'm pause in a second. Do if any teams have been scrumming Malga? I'm not sure. How is the audio? How is the game audio? Too loud? Too quiet? Low, perfect level. Okay, good. I want it to be a little low. I want it to be a little bit low. Um, maybe, maybe too quiet then. Okay, maybe we turn it up just a teeny bit. Um, because I, I want you guys to be able to pretty clearly hear me without too much distraction. Okay. So let, let's let's talk about the matchup here. So this is a really really fun matchup. Something that we're going to be looking at a little bit more in this series. So the, the key way to look at this matchup is it's really not all that deep. The idea is that you are essentially playing with with the combination of the Kiriko. And the Junker Queen, you're essentially playing to more often than not pose more of a threat to the enemy backline. You have more uh, more punching power, no, no pun intended, um, onto the enemy uh, Baptiste and the enemy Sojourn. Um, so while you were definitely going to have missing out on like raw frontline brawl value, you don't have the May wall, you don't have the shield and self sustain of the Ramatra on the frontline. Um, even though JQ isn't all that bad versus Ramatra, she's bad when Ramatra is comboed with something else that can sustain the Ramatra, right? So the, the JQ is going to be under a lot of pressure. However, if the JQ can avoid being walled off and rushed over, uh, then you have not only a Kiriko in an angle, not only do you have Genji, but you actually have the Junker Queen as well with her shout, her own speed boost for her entire team, who's a, actually a really, really big threat to anything. So it's not just the Baptista that has to watch out. 
a mayo without ice block has to be careful. A sojourn uh, without slide has to be careful. There's a lot of ways for this to function more like a dive hybrid than a, just a frontline trade. Um, so it's actually really, really, really scary uh, for the MA backline. Now, I, I'm not going to, no, no crazy spoilers here. We'll have to look at it with the Hawk POV later this week. But the reason this UV actually dies here is he gets knifed right there. I don't know if you guys saw that. That's a, that is a Gracie from Hawk and he gets pulled in and killed. And that's exactly what Timeless's comp is really good at. Like they are able to find these picks. They're able to find these assassinations. Whereas Tornado needs to be really, really cautious. If they can mark Sugar Free, if they can mark RuPaul on the angle and control the front line, um, they're going to have a much, 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 much easier time. In fact, I believe the, the reason why we're going we're to see a really important swap here. Um, I want you to watch what UV swaps do. So you're thinking, okay, well, this team is vulnerable to being dove, being pressured. Timeless is playing like a dive ball hybrid. And there's the swap. Now, Moira is interesting. Moira has been buffed a few times in the last six, seven months. Uh, the most crucial one is the healing resource off of damage orb, by far the most important change. Um, in addition to that, the fade during coalescence. Those are the two big changes here, right? So um, pretty decent buffs here. Uh, and, and now all of a sudden, look at Hydran as well, right? Now you ask me, why, did, why this composition? Well, you ask me, okay, now what does Timeless dive? right? If you could still take angles and pressure and force fade and force wraith and things like that, but there's a lot less, hey, three, two, one, hit the knife, something dies. So there's a, not only that, but there's a lot more pressure directly on Hawk in the front line. So you now have removed those dive opportunities from timeless. Um, and so it makes it a lot harder. So they could still take off angles and pressure and, and spam, but it's a lot worse. And I think this is kind of where we have to shuffle of like, basically this comp beats what Primus Tornado rolled out on. And then this comp is beaten by the, in my opinion, if you go Ramatra and Baptiste and then run a May Sojourn, right? I think that beats this. So it's a little bit of an, a fundamental rock, paper, scissors where ultimately it boils down to a Ramatra mirror with Bap Sojourn. And I think that comp is probably the more consistent middle of the road composition. This is what Funny Astro thought would count on the queen. We'll see. Maybe Primer Strano can make it work. Early wall pressure, and this is what we're seeing, right? Like, that's not only Shout, but that's also Suzu. And really look at Primus Tornado's HP bars. This feel, this is a major problem. So I think part of this is Timeless's execution here. I would have liked Timeless to have had a better off angle here. Um, I think the little split there from the Ram Reaper May was really, really good. You got to give credit where credit is due. This is really, really, really well done by Primus Tornado. Um, the, the little off angle split there for where the Ramatra is controlling the off angle and the Reaper May come in with the speed boost for, with OG from this side. It totally isolates Hawk. The wall is good enough. It's really, really good. I think one little detail there that I think Timeless needed to do better here is Vega needs to be in a position to where he's holding one of these walls here. He needs to be the guy that prevents this from happening. Um, this puts a lot of pressure on Timeless's support line, not only to hit the Suzu and to do the damage, um, but more importantly for the Lusu to be there for speed, and you need your Lusu to boop this crew back. Like, Vega needs to be completely denying the Reaper May push every single time. Every single time. Um, and you also need Sugar Free on deep angles, consistently trying to force Fade, trying to distract Reaper, trying to distract May, because that's too much resource from Primus Tornado on one target, and that's a problem. Like, you can't Hawk can't get that low that quickly. And so then now Primus Tornado now not only has point pressure now, but their next wall is, has a real threat to be like actually lethal. And, and there it is, right? So there's the cutoff there and then he's just freaking dead. And it's just not enough off angle pressure from Timeless. Um, again, I, I want to know where Vega was. Vega, I think, is Vega on the angle here? Where the frick is Vega? Yeah, see, this is a mistake. This is a mistake. So one of the things that, that uh, Timeless was doing a lot is that when they were playing the Ram Mirror, is they were playing their, I don't know if you guys saw this, they were playing Lucio Sojourn. We'll talk about this a little bit later. So they say Lucio plus Sojourn on an off angle, and they just let Hawk just basically stand there and block. And their Lucio Sojourn were just basically farming and building rail and killing people, right? The problem is, is that is in this composition, it, they're not really interested in hunting the Sojourn on the off angle, right? They don't really care about Seeker on the off angle. They want Hawk. And so Hawk is the guy that needs Lucio's speed, not your Sojourn here. Seeker's under no pressure right now. Um, maybe he could get a little bit of pocket from RuPaul, but like there's not really any pressure. We need our Lucio here for speed. And again, we need Lucio here for the defensive boop. This core here should not be able to walk onto Junker Queen like this and get as much pressure as they do. Um, and so we're holding the off angle here, but Hawk, especially with Hawk without Shout, just, he, he can't do this. This isn't going to work. He needs support. Um, so you're probably going to see a swap from Hawk here. I, I, again, I have not seen 90% of this match. 
Um, but yeah, I'm surprised Timeless even stood that close. I mean, they thought they had the angles for it, but I, I think there was a, a fundamental flaw with how they're setting it up. Yeah, Winston Lucio, I think, is more prevalent. I think Kiriko also has a tendency to be more prevalent in high-level play. Sojourn for for sure. Although Sojourn is pretty popular in ranked as well, but uh, yeah. Okay, so high gun rotation from Timeless, and this is the composition that we kind of expected them to see. Now, I, I will say that um, I, I would not expect Kiriko to be paired with Ramatra. I think this is probably a carryover with the old economy. They, we might see a swap to a Baptiste if they lose another fight. Um, uh, yeah. I think the same thing with the Genji. I think the Genji probably wants to swap at this point too, but you know. Good news is that Ramatra, if played really disciplined, doesn't need a ton of healing. There's an early wall there, and that, that's that's what we want, right? Like everybody, so you see now that they're all focusing on Hawk here, but the difference is that Hawk has a shield now. You see it? Hawk has a shield now, so like they're gonna take angles here. But the difference is, is that now and the Jungle Queen doesn't have a shield. Hawk does have a shield. So all this attention right now on the Ramatra, this is actually now a mistake from Primus Tornado, where they need to realize that Hawk isn't just three, two, one kill anymore because he's on Ramatra. They need to be more patient, marking off angles, putting more pressure on controlling Genji, uh, controlling Sojourn, and so on. Um, because this is way, way too much attention on an essentially unbreakable Ramatra shield that even if they did break it, Hawk is just going to stand there and block and buy time for these people be able to survive. And now, crucially, Vega doesn't necessarily need to speed Ram because Ram with shield and nemesis form is very, very tanky. Um, and so then now they're going to actually push back there off of that kill. I mean, that's, he didn't even get a chance to use Ice Block there. There's the, uh, ooh, there's the Coalescence. People might be low here. There's the Blade. Kitsune Blade comboed here. A big commitment from Timeless, but it definitely felt a little bit shaky there. Because um, that's the key thing, too. Like, when you're, when you're on the Kiriko... You don't have a ton of sustain, so if Hawk takes like one or two big shots, it, it can be hard to kind of get him back up again. So, um, Primus Tornado probably is going to stay the same comp. Uh, I, I wouldn't have been shocked there to see them go like Bap Sojourn um, instead, but Hydron has ult. Those are going to stay with that. Big fight went for Timeless. Uh, crucially, they're going to have the Beat and Sojourn ult, which is going to be enough for them to at least contest this fight. And again, I want you to notice here, again, this setup here. Like, you're going to notice that, like, Again, we have a DPS Genji Lucio off angle up on the high ground. Can we increase the quality here? We can. Um, because again, in theory, Hawk. No, actually, it's not even Hawk. Vega should probably be up top, actually. I think Vega should be up top. Um, but yeah, I think I think crucially here, it's like you don't necessarily need Vega with Ramatra anymore. Um, in fact, I'm actually kind of confused why Lucio is on back lane. He doesn't even need to peel a Baptiste anymore because he's Kiriko can always teleport. I, I think I would have preferred Lucio up here. On the off angle, I think that would have been a better play. Hawk will live on his own. He's fine. We just need more pressure from that off angle, and Lucio can help with that. Huge shot from Seeker. I don't even know where he is. Oh, he's up top, and he's just kind of rail from up top. Early deflect force. That's a huge suck from Hawk. Primus Tornado is going to try and kite this out quickly. A little bit of an overextension there from Seeker. Um, and that that's definitely going to allow Tornado to come back in. That's a huge mechanical play there. There's a nice icicle into the... Uh, the shot there. And they might they might just take this 4v4 because their Moira is going to already back. Seeker's not back yet. Uh, and they have an old advantage here as well. Probably going to see a force. There's a rush. They're going to try and rush onto... I think they're trying to Ajax the Lucio. Maybe? It's kind of odd here. They, yeah, they're looking for the... They're looking for... Yeah, so Kaluj goes for Vega. Reaper on... There's a t Teleporter. And so now everybody, so there's no off angles from Timeless right now. So you, you need to know this. Like, you notice that Primus Tornado doesn't just run down on the Ramatra. They're at man advantage. So what do they do? They put pressure on the Lucio. They force the back line out. Hydra TPs on an off angle, forces the Kiriko to back to our team. So if you were to draw like a line around where Timeless is, it's everybody's here. There's nobody on the off angle. There's nobody here. So all now Primus Tornado, Primus Tornado needs to do is just wall here and just absolutely obliterate Hawk. Um, we might see a Death Blossom, we might see uh, a, a Blizzard, we might see a Ramatra like it's just whatever you want. The only thing right now is the Sojourn on the angle, but he, Seeker's not gotten there in time. And so there's the beat, there's the Ramatra ult, we could see the, the beat engaged now if you wanted to, or maybe not even necessary. Yeah, they just they just walk in with Death Blossom and they just get absolutely rolled. Um, so I actually think there for Timeless, the mistake was probably trying to hold on the point. I think I think once you get that bad of a situation, like where you had to kite all the way up and everyone clumped, I think you need to take the time to reset up Seeker on the angle and re-engage more patiently. I think there was a little bit of a 
rush uh, where they wanted to hold point, um, but I don't think you can hold point at that point in time. Uh, no pun intended. I think you need to give it up uh, and then re-engage afterwards because previous Tornado's retake there was really nice. It did start with a free pick on uh, so yeah, Tornado is in a really prime position here to, to pull this one out. It's going to take a mechanical play. Uh, now the good news is that with the Genji, uh, really the Sojourn specifically, there's always a chance of like a mechanical one shot happening. Um, so you just like cheat a fight win because you just hit a rail. So there's a chance that even though Timos is behind the, the eight ball, so to speak, with the uh, a little bit of an early shield there from Hawk, yeah, that's going to prompt a push. Bad wall from Sam though, really, really bad wall, and and not a, and, and a kind of a messy push. Previous Tornado trying to quote unquote set tempo here. Um, probably looking for the Lucio. Yep, they're looking for Lucio. Um, with like an off angle coalescence push. Well, kind of. But there's no pincer here. I don't know where. It's, yeah, yeah. So this is a miss push. So they're pushing through here. If this is going to work, first off, the wall has to be much better. The wall was terrible from Sam. But then you also need Hydran to come from the off angle at the opposite side to cut off their approach. If, if, Hydra, if the problem here is that four people, at least, maybe five from Tornado, come from the same angle. So this gives a free kite path for Timeless out the door. And there's a real chance here that not the Timeless can literally just fully kite out Coalescence. And that's exactly what they're going to do. And not, not only that, but they've allowed them to rotate on point. So bad May wall, uh, and, and really just not a good pencil from Hydran. They're not a well set up engage at all. Um, so they set tempo, but nothing happens. <laughs> um, there's the Katsune Rush. That's almost certainly going to force... I mean, Tornado might need to give up point here. Um, there's a lot of... There's, there's a Wraith. Yeah, they're definitely going to have to kite. Okay, so they kited, but then they also beat. So, But they're not going to be able to push off of the beat because I didn't back out. Then they're going to Blizzard chase, but they still have Suzu. So the Suzu's used to live Blizzard. Then the Blizzard... Then the Blade is used after all the cooldowns have been used. And so the layer theory here, right, where one thing forces and one cooldown... So basically think about it this way. What did Coalescence force? Nothing. Basically nothing. Everyone has their full CDs, everyone's back in safe. So then they use Katsune. What is that force? Well, that force is Ray. That force is Shield. It looks like that might actually have forced Ice Block, I'm not sure. Then they use B. But because the, the Reaper's all the way back, they can't actually push to get value out of this B, right? So then they just live in the Suzu, and they just heal and live and heal and live. So now you've used one ultimate, and not only have you forced another ultimate, but you've denied that ultimate from doing anything. So then Primus Tornado is like, we haven't really done anything. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Then they push. I think that might have been Suzu there. They might have forced Suzu there. That might have been why Sam goes for the freeze. Yeah, that was Suzu right there. So Sam's like, hey, freeze, 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 freeze. The problem is, is that all of these characters have too many abilities to live, right? They have dash, they have slide, they have teleport. So even if you've seen Suzu, if Hawk isn't frozen, then it doesn't matter. So the problem here is, <laughs> I actually think that the Blizzard should have gone on Hawk and not should have gone and should not have gone on backline. I think it's too easy for Hawk to live here. So then they all kite the Blizzard out. Sam either doesn't ice block or doesn't have it, and then Timeless pushes back in with the Blizzard and and also the uh, the Ramhold. The Ramhold actually wasn't even all that necessary. Um, but at this point, with 92%, even one more kill here, and that and that's a match. So. Um, Really, that that coalescence push from 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 Pimus was, was what cost them. That was that was really 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 not good. And I, and I do think Timeless at points has looked a little shaky with playing into the Reaper Moira. Maybe uh, especially Vegas position, um, not not the best. Um, so yeah, okay. Better old economy, really much 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 better old economy. Old execution. Here. Okay, any questions so far? I will take it. We'll take a second between between rounds. Just for any questions that are preferably correlated with what we're watching. Wait, Symmetra. Wow, that's uh, that's old school. I don't know how Symmetra is anymore. I think uh, losing 25 HP in the Brawl is a big deal, right? Um, at least at this level, right? Should OG have saved Beat for Blade? I, I Yeah, I, I do think the Beat push was, was dead in the water. If Hydran calls that he's out here, his Wraith is forced, they are not in a position to push with because they needed this beat to get a kill. Or at least freaking a night. Psych, thanks for the sub. Um, so yeah, I think saving the beat here or just ping or, uh, or, or certainly beating when you could actually like, because here's the thing. If you beat here and you force Suzu and the teleporter and the slide and the Genji and whatever, then you could blizzard the blade and you're fine. So it's either they needed to save the blizzard or say or get more value to the beat because they just they just used two with with nothing and it was not good.
Um, so yeah. Um, yeah. Um, oh yeah, they stay in Moira. Good catch. I didn't even see that. Yeah, this is this is this is what they call uh, down south, sussy baka. Um, I, 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 you need generally historically you've needed the Baptiste with the Symmetra because Symmetra is the squishiest character, um, especially with 200 HP. Where so you need lamp and shift just to keep her alive. If you keep her alive long enough, she's super good. But I don't know. I'm not so sure that Moira can keep Symmetra up. Mm. I think it's map dependent, uh, Sujiko. My prediction is this. If this meta were to stick around for longer than like the week that we had it, right? Obviously, Mal goes out, so it's ripping the water, right? I think this variation is more likely to do better because faster variants are always easier to pick up, but then slower variants always come out as people get better at controlling the map and controlling off angles, right? As Vega, I'm sure, would have adjusted and learned that he needs to play with his Reaper May or, or to deny the May, you know, it would have been easier to keep your Ramatra up and, and, and so on. I think slower variant, this happened, this, go, this happened all the way back in Goats, right? You start off with a faster variant and then you pick the variant that's better in the mirror. Um, this, uh, this might be better, like let's, let's plug in Reaper. This might be better versus like other comps, like spam comps, right? But I think this is probably going to be your best bet in the mirror. I, I think this is probably the best bet in the mirror. I think maybe it's map dependent. Sure. But yeah. But this comp is weird. I'm not going to lie with you guys. This feels like a compositional toss. They must have some sort of like scouting knowledge or they've got reps in this and they have some sort of like cheese play because I don't think Primus Tornado is comp. I don't know who wins this map. But maybe I'm going to be eating my words. So, we're going to notice here that they're not actually going to point yet. No point. No pun intended, because the point's not locked. So you're not going to capture the point yet, so no point going to point. Instead, hold this high ground as long as you can, stuff them in the choke, and then go to point at the last possible second. Because the longer you stand on point, and this, you know, Sojourn has high ground, and Bap has high ground, and, you know, the maze poking him, the more of a chance that they can just get a kill for you on point. Because position, your positioning on point is terrible, right? So they're going to wait to the last possible second. And it actually looks like they might actually want to push inside here, which my opinion would be hubris. I, I think that would be really stupid. Uh, especially because now that they have the main mirror, they can counter wall on the push. I think pushing into a choke is, is not good, um, but maybe they see something. No, yeah, okay, they're not going to actually rotate. Wait, are they? No. They're going to TB to point. Okay, yeah, and this is this should be a free cap for uh, for people. So pretty well executed. I'm still concerned about the composition, but yeah. Now, the key thing here is Seeker. Seeker has to build a rail. Seeker has to find an angle. Um, even if it's just from the other side, I love the the, the little anger, angle anger, anger, angle here that that Hydrant's holding. He's, he's like making sure that Seeker can't take an angle here and just poke out uh, Kaluge too much. Um, is there an argument to go to point immediately to set up turrets and cycle back to having TP? Um, not really. No, turrets are almost instantly set up anyway. There's the wall push. Uh, what happens to the walls here? So. Crucially here, Hydrant cannot be on point early because he doesn't have 225 HP and they don't have a bat. So he has they have to give up a lot of space here. So they wall early, they wall for point pressure. And this is just where I just Oh man, they already have window? What the frick? How do they already have window? Is it the damage orbs? I think it's a little bit of everything. Yeah, so there's some damage orbs, there's a lot of ram spam, some May Icicles, a lot of Hydra norms. They already have window. Yeah, they just they just farmed window. They just farmed window. I didn't even know that. So they just freaking farmed window. Hawk just 3 2 1 ints. And again, because you're playing Moira and, and Bap and not Bap and, and you're 200 HP Symmetra, you really can't man up on point here. You have to give up a lot of space here. And so they just freaking window. And that's it. So the an early point advantage is kind of not. That's not a great shift from RuPaul there. Um, but that, yeah. So there's the lamp. Somehow Primus Tornado lives it out and stalls point. That's phenomenal cycling there. There's the wall. Mm, these these walls from Sam have not been good. Not been very good. This wall needs to be a little bit tighter. Um, it's it's kind of hard to see like whether maybe it just wasn't a good cycling. But these these there's, there's these gaps are like that should have killed Hawk. Right there. You've had time to charge your uh, Symmetra Beam. 
you have uh, this 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 wall needs to hit because you're giving angles and people also to squeeze out. Um, yeah, sounds good to me, sex go. Thank you, mate. Um, just don't make sure they make sure they don't forget the celery. Um, but yeah, this is a this is and then they also they toss the blizzard in and it doesn't hit any. Okay, it it zones, I guess. It's a great amp by Vega getting them out of the blizzard, but Hawk dies nonetheless. And now Primus has the chance to clean Yeah, up. okay, no wow. Well. No First fight, huge. Really now the problem here, so he uh oh, He's been doing that that's a big play. Today, no now I say the problem here, so the problem here for No Way Seeker, what are you doing, buddy? What are you doing, buddy? The problem here for, for uh, okay, so, so let's talk about this really fast. So. That was really, really, really well played by Primus Tornado outside of the bad main wall. Um, the bad news for Timeless is that that's, you know, the good news is that, that you know, that's a fight that the Symmetra may, Moira, they're going to have a first fight advantage, you know, because the squishiness of the Symmetra is harder to punish until she gets, uh, you know, you get the Ram old or the May old and then she just dies. But the problem is, is that that wasn't just a first fight. That was a first fight and then some. I mean, look at this. This this there's still this fight is still going and there's 61% here. This has been one fight and this round's almost over. So I might be eating my words, chat. Maybe Hydrant's just too big brain with his positioning here. That is a flip though. Timeless is fighting it. Uh Kaluge. Kaluge is really isolated. What what happened here, guys? Hello? So Sam misses the wall on Vega, which is sucky again. Like real, that that Vega should be dead here, but Vega lives. They push back in hard. The shield isn't all that good from Haluj because I don't think it cuts off much. Yeah, it doesn't really do much. The shield isn't all that good. They're not a great shield. Hawk shield's way better because it stops all this damage from coming in. And then the wall from Sugarfree, because Kaluj is extended just a little bit deep, is a little too far. Um, and again, it feels like Primus Tornado is just reaching without really any good clean setup. Um, and and UV is now split. Kaluj is now split. Vega beats. And again, now it's now it's Timeless's turn to kind of be the rat here and just live. There is the Mayolt. Is there something caught? Oh my goodness. They've caught UV without fade. That is a bit of an error. And so UV lives. Oh my gosh. UV lives. Oh my gosh. With like a frame to spare. A frame to spare. Yeah, he faded to heal Kaluj. But yeah, he walks on the point there. Um, Still a decent utility mail. As long as Sugar Free lives, he does not. But again, the point's still stalling here. Like this is still winnable. Like that was that was the entire bank from Timeless. Like this is still winnable here. There's the suffering. Will the Symmetra? Yeah, and then, that, and then that's the Symmetra HP right there. You see that? Like that's it right there. Like he reacts pretty quickly, tries to get out, but it doesn't work. And so the ult dump from Timeless is is better. Um, yeah, not not great, guys. Not not great. What happened with the beat? I want to see what happened with the beat here. I think the beat was to keep Ultraviolet alive. Um, yeah, yeah. That that's that's unfortunate. That's a big mistake from Ultraviolet. That's a big mistake from Ultraviolet because the the beat here could have been so much later. Like you could have beated to save your Romatra, like at least three seconds in here, four seconds in, which would have allowed a lot more punish here. And really, to be honest with you guys, the, the, the ram ult from Kaluj is also not all that great either. Um, let me look at this again. No, he's in the ram ult when he gets frozen. It's just it's just not good layering. It's just not good layering from Tornado. There's the ram ult. The ram ult really wasn't necessary, but this is, what, this is how Tornado are losing these fights. It's one, two, three ults layered on top of each other, especially after a coalescence that was largely ineffective. Um, you, you need two out of these three ultimates, maybe. You really don't need the Ram ult. If UV doesn't troll, they don't even need the beat at this point in time. Um, the Sim ult was, was probably the best of the bunch. Um, but it, it, and, and even then, they don't, they only get the May pick with it. They don't really do a whole lot more else with it. They just shoot a blocking Ram. Um, so again, Timeless just finds ways to be able to kite out, survive these ultimates, or at least force Tornado to use way more. Um, the ult, the ult traits have been a lot better. Like there's all, there's, there's been like one really crucial mistake with Tornado and then it forces a bunch of ultimates and then they lose. Um, because that was a great start from Tornado. Like they got to kicking themselves on that one. I think she's the weakest. Wouldn't hate to see a Batiste swap at this point in the map.
Oh. Yeah, that's true, Beagle. Batista's back. And they're just not setting them up well. Like, the coalescence was not set up well. They got almost nothing out of it. The ram ult was not set up well. They got almost nothing out of it except May ult, or May block. Um, the beat was not bad, but it was only necessary because UV mispositioned. You know? Yeah, the TP helps a lot. The TP helps, and then when the ram is also going Nemesis form, you can charge him off him. So oh, that is saucy. A bit of AOE damage there with the vortex. Boop as well onto Sam. So off him. So helps a lot. The TP helps. So UV goes back. Ram is also going Nemesis form. To be honest with you guys, this is I think a YOLO play. I think that they're trying to take a fast fight here. I think they're trying to take a fast fight because they know they have two fights here and they don't have any ults, and they're also not super close to any ults besides the Blizzard. Um, maybe there's a mistake in ult tracking because it's actually pretty even here. Um, but I think this is just they're going to take a YOLO fight. They lose, no big deal. Come back and win again. Really nice boop from Vega though. Like, fight winning boop here. Totally mispositions the Ram, the Lucio. The Symmetra, I think, as well, but it, booping the May off of the high ground means Sam has to go to point. Vega should not have died there though. That's a huge mistake. Come on, Vega. You're better than that. I think Vega, great, great vortex from Kaluja there. Ooh, 13 HP. That's problematic. But you notice this, like, they're still living, like, you're still living. Like, somehow, Timeless is still stalling this point here. No, there's no way. Like, there's actually no way. How? How? Like, this is the thing. If you're previous Tornado right now, the only thing that you need to do here is live. The only thing you need to do here is live. And somehow, Sam is like, oh, like... There's Ice Block. Does Sam get booped in? Sam walls himself off. Yeah, see, Sam Sam is just trolling. Sam is trolling. Sam, at this point, all Sam needs to do is live. I think Hydran's dead. I don't know what the frick Hydran is doing. That guy that guy is smoking some kush, you know what I'm saying? But, but I think he's to set up a teleporter, and the, yeah, yeah, the Ram found him. He's dead. He's dead. Let, let Hydran die. Sam cannot go in here. Sam goes in here without Ice Block and just freaking dies. And Hydran is, yeah, dead. But there is absolutely no reason for Sam to die there. Um... Now Vega's gonna go out and RKO Ultraviolet, and this is just like this is where like you can you can see like losing losing one fights there like that 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 hurts that that really hurts. Totally unnecessary death from Sam. Um, I, I have to hard see hard from from, from Hydran there, but hard to see. Huge boop. Forces ice block, but she doesn't even get the touch. So Lucio has to touch with B. Blizzard is honestly not. Is, 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 Sam has to use it just because he doesn't have ice block but then he gets killed and then yeah i mean timeless just has the the, the, the kitchen sink ice block is such an important cooldown sam literally has to ult there because he doesn't have ice block dude thanks for the sub hydrate time thank you can i explain the comps um i i would go back to the start of each round like go back in the bottom because i can tell you it's basically a more point-oriented style comp, where Timeless is going to be more about controlling off angles and, and, and abusing the uh, the Sojourn more. Um, but I, I go more in depth at the start of each round. But yeah, I, I think really, really old old game diff there, and, and a little bit of team play diff there. I, I think obviously the composition I don't think was was definitely a little bit risky, especially without the with a lack of Baptiste with the Symmetra. But yeah, Timeless definitely deserved that W there. Um, okay, any uh, any questions so far? Any questions so far? Your team went hard. What? I'm eating sweet potatoes. Which are good. Uh, wouldn't the TB bait into speed and the point be better in the second to last fight there? Yeah, probably. Travel Mangle, thanks for the sub. Really good stuff so far? Thank you. Yeah, very, very, very enjoyable so far. Very enjoyable match. <clears throat> yeah, it's, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. I, I like it.
checking something really fast, and then we'll resume. Now, if I remember correctly, somebody said here that this is a bit of a throw from Timeless. So, <laughs> no spoilers, but yeah, exact spoilers. Um, so this 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 should be an interesting round, to say the least. Okay, let's uh, let's do this. Okay. <clears throat> this is the missing piece they lacked yesterday. Playing two videos, uh, a little bit of beef. But you can force the enemy off the sojourn as. Okay, so let, let's talk about this composition here. So this is the first time. I mean, it's the same kind of composition that we saw in the previous round. I am. Um, I'm not so sure about this comp on this map. Let me talk about why. So, again, the idea is to pose some sort of a threat on, on, on the off angle control, which, to be fair, on first point is pretty good. The problem is, is that this map is so open that it might be really easy for these characters to kind of avoid this character, and even to an extent this character, and just poke things out. I, I think it will be hard for Queen to not... It will be hard for Timeless to control off angles without being so split from their Queen that their Queen's vulnerable. Um... I'm, I'm, I don't, I don't think this cop makes as much sense as it did in the previous round where the things were a little bit tighter, the nature of cause, right? So I don't know. Um, it's, it's an odd choice. I honestly would prefer timeless to just mirror here. You've got an advantage if the Genji can actually deliver and honestly, Sugar Free is really set up to dominate this comp. Fab Sojourn, very scary. Feels like that Vortex is the one big thing he really has to worry about, him getting dragged. Down from a, from a high ground position. You are trying to control some angles here. I think that's Soj on the left side there. Yeah. But the problem is, is that, uh, can Hawk live? Do you see what I'm saying with like the, um, with the Lucio and the Sojourn here? That the odd part is, it's just like, um, it feels like Vega's kind of like doing his own thing sometimes. Like he's getting some spam damage here, but I, I don't know. There's the dive, there's the attempt on the back line, but Hawk just gets walled and annihilated. Um, I just I just don't think that there's enough aggression from Vega and Seeker right now. I don't think Vega's got a good enough angle. I don't think Seeker's got a good enough angle. I think the aggression there was premature. Um, you need you need a lot more than that. Like even even sugar freeze position here. So like let's put it this way. If you don't like like let's put it this way. Like if you don't like where your sojourn is as a Lucio, then at the very least sugar free needed to come from this angle here through hotel with Lucio's speed here. That would have worked a lot better than what we saw here because then all of a sudden you've got actual pressure on the hydrant. That's the wrong tool. Who will have to slide back this way? May will probably also have to look this direction as well. Which even just getting May to look away is one of the most important things you can do for your Junker Queen. I, I think this is really poorly set up from Thomas. I don't like Sugar Freeze positioning. It's way too direct. Um, I don't like Vegas positioning. I don't even know what Vegas is doing right now, to be honest with you. Um, RuPaul also as well probably could be holding a more aggressive off angle as well. I, I think the setup from, from Thomas is, is the comp it. I'm not so sure either. Uh, but you have to have a, a better angle control. For this. this is just a stagger. And so, yeah. If he just gets one, right? Need more information on the sweep videos later? Maybe, maybe. I don't know. You'd have you'd have to make it worth my time, you know what I'm saying? Huge trade, but the problem is this back window. <laughs> Forcing ice block with, with, with Carnage is pretty decent. Um obviously they had to use shout, but that, that's pretty decent. But back window and you know, again, Junker Queen just gets annihilated. Now let's see what's the setup here. Is that Lucio Genji? No, it's Kiriko Genji. Lucio Sojourn wrapping from main. Yeah, I mean, again, it feels like a decent setup, just maybe a little bit rushed. Um, yeah. <laughs> That'll do it. How many more staggers will we have? So far, this Queen Genji has not been working. This is their chance with a big ultimate cycle. Maybe the ults do favor. You have to choke out uh, the Ram comp if you're going to play in Queen Genji. Ego. Ego. Nice. There's the Katsune, there's the Sojourn Old. Hydrant gets sucked, he doesn't have shift. They're able to pocket him out. There's the Ram catch. The good news, okay, so the good news about all this is that in theory, Timeless at least has some angle control here. The problem is, is that you're coming up to a really scary old spike where Ramatra is just essentially unkillable now and Blizzard can freaking kill somebody. I think Hawk probably will save his ult for Blizzard. Um, so let's see how Sam walls it. 
We'll see how Sam walls it. There's the beat. They're looking for Blade here. There's the beat in response from OG. Was the beat necessary? Was the beat necessary? I don't, I actually don't think it was. I actually don't think it was. I, I think Kaluj was pocketable. Does UV have lamp? UV does have lamp, I think. I think maybe he does? Let's see. I don't like this beat from OG. You have Kaluj in uh, Annihilation. You have a beat, but there's nobody on top of anybody but your Ramatra here. This is a bad beat. This is certainly too early. He, Kaluj just needs to sit there and hold black. So then this gives a window where Sugarfree does have a blade opportunity here. Really bad blade from Sugarfree. <laughs> um, um, yeah, this isn't great, guys. I'm not going to lie with you. Uh, this, this, this blade isn't good. Um, he needed to dash at the floor of Hydran, at the feet of, of, of Hydran. Um, he has beat HP here. There's the ult from JQ. You know what, guys? I'm not going to lie. The ult from Junker... Wait. Oh, that's why OG beats. I'm sorry, guys. I, I take it back. My OG slander. Now, I think, obviously, maybe in hindsight, it wasn't all that necessary because... Okay, you know what? Actually, no. I Yeah, I take it back. My, my OG slander is fine. Uh, he beats JQ. There's just so many things happening on my screen. Overwatch moment. So the beat's fine. The ult from Hawk is a little... Meh. Maybe a little bit rushed. I would prefer to have that. Um, yeah, why does he? Why does he ult? I think he sees Sojourn. Yeah, okay, sure, sure, so sure. It's a little scary though when you don't have Blizzard used yet. But this blade is terrible. This blade is terrible. You have JQ ult, you know they have beat. The beat is still very much alive and well. And if you're gonna beat at the very least, or blade in the beat, you need to dash directly on your target because it's gonna take at least four swings to kill the target. But he dashes so far away. And so far on the open that he then has to chase, which then allows him to get booped there by OG. So huge boot from OG, and now the blade's totally wasted. So really, really, really not 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 a good blade from Sugar Free at all. Kind of a questionable uh, JQ ult as well, because now that leaves him totally they can totally exposed. Also vulnerable to mail, which they don't even need to use. Um, yeah, I, I don't like Thomas's execution here at all. Don't like it at all. Can't wait for when David gets his wings up. Yeah, so there they go. They're gonna they're gonna tap out. Um, bit of an awkward time to tap out, but you've used all your ult, so you might as well. You know, there's no you're not saving old economy for staying at this point. Um, this is like. This is where I don't, I just, I, I, I just don't like Primus Tornado's approach to fights. And this is something that we've seen all the way back in American Tornado. This is where we've seen all the way into uh, Toronto Defiant. What's the problem here, chat? You tell me, what's the problem? What's the problem? Look at the situation. Look at the big picture here. Tell me what's wrong here. So Hawk gets freaking annihilated. Like, annihilated with that bad window. I think he, he nemesis form. But what's the problem here? You see it? This is a classic Toronto Defiant. Like, you, you, you have the world's best bat window. You, you don't, you should not be committing double ult on a choke when there's 45 seconds left. Right, exactly. This is too, this is too fast. Not only is it too fast, but it's also arguably too much, right? You get a good back window, you get a good mail, you don't really need the other one. You need, this is, this is open the, the, the window for, for, for Timeless to lose this fight quickly and actually reset and take a fight. And now, instead of you having like maybe two ults or last fight territory, they will actually maybe have a couple of ults to play with. And this is like something that I think that this team has struggled with a lot. It's the, let's just go, let's just go, let's just push, you know? And it, it usually leads to over ulting and taking fights in bad locations. Or in at bad times. Um, and, and that's going to cost them here, I think. Yeah, because this goes to the second point, right? I remember tuning in at some point because I was there for the drops. Um, yeah, this isn't good. I like the setup from Seeker here. That's going to kill Sam. I'm not sure exactly what happened there. I think he was trying to greed Ice Block and got caught off guard. Uh, but that's it. Yeah, that's it. Like, Timeless doesn't even need to use an ultimate now because Seeker hits a shot. 
But, you know, you could even look at like where that fight was occurring, right? It's not necessarily the best position for defenders. It's not bad. But, you know, and like even even this is like this is this is really egotistical. Like it might work, but I, I just think there's a ceiling to how much this kind of approach to fights works. Because it's it, I don't I don't want to be hindsighty here and be like, oh, this is really smart, guys. Because hey, they almost won this fight. You know what I'm saying? But it's a four v five. They have full map control. You know that they have at least one ultimate, if not two. Do you really want to take this four v five as opposed to holding the choke right here? Because if you lose this fight, they get this choke for free, and this is the best choke in the game. Like this is absolutely brutal in Brawl Mirrors. So even this is like, I don't agree with the risk here. I don't agree with it. I think it might work sometimes, but even here, it's like the only reason it worked is because Sugar Free, where the frick is Sugar Free? He just doesn't use, he gets, he just doesn't use his ice block. He's in the hotel. If they use, he uses ice block here, Sidon is dead. So it, cap, it basically, it forces errors. It's like a lack of better, it's like a skill check play style. You know, it's like, it's like a skill check play style. If you, you can die to it. Oh man. Do they get to second point here? This, this, there's not a whole lot to analyze here, guys. This is just total mechanical chaos. Better players win. Um, people who hit their shots win. There's no like sort of macro to this at all. But yeah, I mean, this is where like, you know, you could be hindsighty here and second guess this, but I think even if that had worked, I, I think that that's a very inA approach to a fight where you're at a, a pretty severe disadvantage and you choose to take the fight anyway. Um, and I think that that's just one of the, there's just like a ceiling to how much that can work. Because what it does is it's unexpected um, and it's confident, right? But there's just a ceiling to how much that can work because equally skilled teams are not going to die to that stuff. Like Sugar Free is probably kicking himself in the booty cheeks going, you know, I shouldn't have died to that. I'm, I'm better than that, right? And if he is better than that, then Tornado gets annihilated. Um, okay. The good news is that, 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 that because of that kill, that fight was very messy here. And this is, you know, not a terrible position for Primus Tornado. Um, old economy wise. Now they do give up the choke, which is bad. There's an early nemesis form, but a bit early. What is, uh, I think he might've, I don't know. I don't know what Kaluj saw there. I think maybe he was a little low. Maybe his shield is expired. Maybe he's getting poked out by Sugar Free, but he's going to use his, uh, his nemesis form a little early there. And Sugar Free is crucially going to keep his ice block. So this kind of opens up a window here. Nice little off angle help there. Oh my gosh. Seeker should have died there. Um, that's going to open up a window for Timeless to take a little bit more space. It's a really nice May wall. Um, but RuPaul gets railed. Wow. Was that a bat point though? Yeah, it's a one-shot bap window, body shot. Really, really nice little combo there from, from Primus Tornado. That was good. That was really well done. Good little catch there because Primus Tornado lost the cooldown trade there, right? On the tank. Um, ooh, that's unfortunate. Um, so then, you know, Timus is like, hey, let's go, 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 right? And they walk right into a bap window. Okay. Okay. Um, I think what's probably going to happen here is you're going to play relatively slow, farm this BAP window, probably going to BAP window right here just to force a split. And then from this split, we could see a Lucio Sojourn combo over here. Here. And then off of that, either kite out the mail or mirror the mail and then beat as, uh, in the Devolved fight. I think some sort of window into Sojourn ult's the way to go. And then on the alternative here, I think you just need to know that you're not going to be able to match them in the spam. Um, Hydran might be able to mirror the Sojourn ult, uh, but this angle is pretty scary. I think the key thing is that Sam needs to free somebody. If Sam frees somebody, I think that they still win this fight. So it's really important that Hawk lives. Hawk and Sugar Free need to just live. Oh yeah, so they actually, they, they, they did it before the BAP window. I would prefer the BAP window first. I would prefer the BAP window first, or at least maybe even at the same time. Um, you know, not always a huge fan of comboing, but just because it's a nasty choke, I think a combo here would be good. Um, and yeah, because the, the thing is here is there's just not enough pressure from the front line. And so all, yeah, it's just, it's just not executed super well. I would have preferred BAP window first to get some space and then, then execute that play. That way that your Ram and May can provide a little bit more pressure. Um, because, you know, all they're shooting is, is a Ram shield right now. Meanwhile, you're 4v2ing in the back line. Um, that's not great. That was not well executed by, uh, by Timeless. 
So Timeless is, um... Ooh, nice stagger here. This is a big stagger. Big stagger. Look at the clock. Look at the clock. Look at the clock, right? So now you're thinking in a situation where it's not just, oh, let's comfortably set up, but we actually kind of have to be in a rush. Or Lucio has to go pick up. And, and this is, yeah, see, this is, this is where this is good. You know, this is where like having that, like this is where like their BAP isn't there yet. The RAM is a little bit too close because he has to worry about touch. This is, this is good. This is good. This is not, hey, let's just three, two, one, run in. This is intelligent. This is calculated. Uh, Hawk should die here. And Hawk does die here. Great little angle there from Kalu. There's the BAP window suffering. And they even have the angle over here. Is this from Hydron? Yeah. But this 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 should be good for Primus Tornado. All Kalu needs to do is die. Yeah. Really, really, really well set up fight there from, from, from Primus Tornado. Made, I, wait. I don't know how Ultraviolet dies. Ultraviolet should not have died there. Where is Ultraviolet? What happens here? There's the beat. Beat is a little, maybe a little early, but, uh, you know, whatever. It only gets two people, though. And then Lamp and Vegas freaking dies to Vi Ultraviolet dies to Vega anyway. Yeah, some sort of a mechanical goof up on the back line there, because, like, yeah, it, that was kind of messy. I'm not going to lie. Um, should be okay, though, still. Yeah, this should be okay. Yeah, HP diff. These are some crazy teams. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. But yeah, I mean, I think Primus Tornado just, I mean, the comp diff in the, the first couple of fights, definitely a big deal. Um, Some really nice fights from Primus Tornado on the second point. Uh, and Timeless looks a little lost. Okay, any questions so far? So, unsurprisingly, mirror comp here. I think this is pretty intelligent here. Don't need to do anything cute. Just play the mirror. Um... Yeah, any questions so far? I want to actually pause there for a second. <laughs> no? We'll keep going then. So nice when they happen. So, split rotation, Sojourn. Uh, which stream is this? Official? This is uh, official. Um... Early Annihilation, Lucio Sojourn. I mean, this is something that, that this, this these guys do all the freaking time. Lucio Sojourn on the angle. I like it a lot. Hawkeye's a little caught here. Does have to use the Annihilation, but it's not the end of the world because he does force it from Kaluge. Not the best May wall there from your buddy Lenny. Because um, again, Kaluge just kind of squeezes right out of it. Yeah, and there's the later, the secondary Maywall, which it's not better to Maywall first or second. It doesn't really matter, but this Maywall actually does something, and Lenny's Maywall did not do something. So Hawk should probably either die or get really freaking low. Lamp or something should be forced here. What happens? How is, what is going on here? Help, 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 help. Okay, really good Lucio Sojourn off angle. OG needs to try and go up there and soft contest that. He does. May is here. Um, They're all focusing on Hawk. I think they should be focusing on May. Um, this is a little bit of the uh, platinum tank itis where everyone wants to shoot the main tank, but the freaking sugar free is way too freaking close uh, without May wall. So he actually forces ice block on Sam, but Sam's in cover. Sugar free is not. So there's an ice block trade here. And that that is a big cooldown trade here because the May can't play as aggressive here. So in theory now, yeah, yeah. So in theory now, what, what happens to Sam? Why does Sam need? Okay, he's low. Uh, so in theory now, there's an opportunity here for Primus Tornado to take a little bit of space. They do. Kaluge crucially has his DPS clearing off the off angle. And, and Primus Tornado has kind of wheedled their way forward just a little bit. Uh, what is Hawk doing? Hawk is smoking. Hawk does a flippity flippity flop. Um, probably not a good lamp from RuPaul there. That was a wall in the middle. Hawk does a, what we call a flippity floppity flop. And now, bam, Sam. Ice block. Forced. Sam back on the off angle, and they bought themselves some time. A little bit of ring around the rosy there. And that allow... Oh, Sugar Free is... Sugar Free is getting a little bit smoked here. He's getting caught. So he's stuck. Point pressure from Kaluge in the meantime. Sugar Free is all the way behind. <laughs> Sugar Free is all the way around behind. Um... 
Yeah. So let's let's just take a quick second to look at this here. So you've got basically everybody from Timeless up here, and they can't really push through because if they do, they get walled by Sam. So what Sugar Free can try to do is three, two, one, walk upstairs with a pincer from here. And I think that needs to happen pretty quick. Um, you could also have your Lucio Sojourn. Uh, I guess you really couldn't have your Lucio, but you can have your Sojourn slide over here and take an angle over here um, on, on, on Kaluj. But right now, like the backline positioning is so superior for Primus Runa. They can do so much more damage. These guys are doing nothing. Ah, there's the three, two, one. They rotate underneath at the same time Bap comes from. This is a this is a Florida Mayhem type play right here. This is a Florida Mayhem type play. Three, two, one. Push the off angle. Flank. Push on main. I like it. I, I think that's good. This this in theory. Uh, where's Ultraviolet here? If o, if OG is able to get this beat off, maybe they can win because they don't have anything to mirror. But if they don't get this beat off, I think previous tornado dies. We know on the high ground too. Wait, what happens? Why does RuPaul lamp here? I, oh, it's because Sam's shooting through it. Okay, so Sam's shooting through the window, so there's a lamp. Ultraviolet should die. Do they get the beat off? They don't. Oh, he does. And Hawk gets isolated. Where is my friend Hawk? Okay, so he's getting smoked by the enemy bat window, but that's okay. It's actually not a terrible trade as long as they're able to keep the push. So Hawk dies, but Hawk does get killed eventually. Timeless still holds the high ground. It's a 4v4. Seeker gets the kill. There's the Sojournal. We need to force Ice Block here or kill him, one or the other. There's the Ice Block. May needs to die. RuPaul dies to OG, who is going wild. I think it's just a 1v1. I think that's just a 1v1. Yeah, so the loop, so Vega goes to help Sojourn, isolates RuPaul, who gets smoked. Oh, this is so complicated. Yeah. So, so, so reality, the reality of the situation is this is just because, ironically, because Primus Tornado had worse positions for that, for a lot of that fight. Also, also Ramatra bug. <laughs> also Ramatra bug. Um, it, basically, they didn't build beat in time. Um, so their the ult dump worked a little bit better for Timeless. You said, Jake, without an overtime push, it's looking a Look at his arms. Look at Ramatra's arms. A man is Y posing. If you got, if I can make the, honestly, if I can make with the best players from both of these teams, I, I don't know. I'm not as familiar with these players. I, I, hmm, that's hard. That's hard. I, that's hard. I think it's especially hard with. I think. I think. I'm. I'm definitely. A, I'm. I'm Kalud or Hawk pilled. Um, and. But RuPaul and Ultraviolet is hard, and it's all of them are hard to be honest with you. I'm only the only one I'm really uh, pilled on is Hawk. I think the rest of them are pretty tough. Maybe Sugar Free. Sugar Free is a little bit more flexible. Um, but even here, it's like you know, I don't think the gap is, especially in like the May, is like that that major. So close to be capped already. There's the early mail. Did they catch Hawk? They do, but it's not the end of the world. You see, this is kind of like where I don't, I don't love. I just don't, I don't love it from either side, guys. Like this is, this is like the level of eight, the level of patience here just isn't here. So Sam's gonna go three, two, one, yeet. He runs in there and drops his Blizzard. I think it's just the nerves. I think it's going, oh shoot, the card is this close. We have to get it. But. The Blizzard from Sugar Free is just bad. It totally misses Kaluj. The Blizzard from Sam is a little rushed. It does freeze Hawk. It forces a lot of resources and forces Beat. I don't think Beat was even necessary, to be honest with you guys. Um, so, I think here, this is where if you're Sugar Free, you're just chill. Like, you just chill. You just Ice Block, and then you can throw your Blizzard a little bit later. I think Sugar Free is just a little bit nervous, so pops his Blizzard, and, and all he does is he forces Ice Block. Um, whereas at least... Uh, Sam's Blizzard forced Lamp and took a big chunk. And then there's the Rammel. The beat from Vega is also used. It's just... Where even is this beat? Oh, this beat doesn't even... Isn't even Reach Hawk. Yeah, this is bad. This is really bad. 
they're taking turns having different ult ints. This is a total, total, total disaster from, from Timeless. This is it. They've, they've, they've lost this fight. That's terrible. Yeah. That's, that's, that's terrible. Yeah, ter terrible, terrible set of, set of ultimates there. Uh, Sugar Freeze ult is rushed and whiffs entirely. Uh, Vega's ult hits, I think, just him. Or, yeah, it's just him and Seeker. He's not in any position to support Hawk. Hawk didn't even need the beat in the first place because the position where he got frozen was really, really safe. It's just goofy errors from Sugar Free, goofy errors from Vega. Not good. Yeah, the ult usage here is really poor. Um, to be fair, I don't think these guys have had a ton of time to practice this mirror. This is a relative, I'm sure they're a little bit out of practice, but it, it, the, 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 the macro hasn't been too bad, I guess, in terms of like the setups, but the ult usage has been pretty bad. Why Lucio in the high ground first point to start with Sergeant instead of switching, swapping place with Batiste? Um, uh, the start. Um, because Bap has to play an angle that is con more concerned with his Ramatra, and Lucy is more flexible with his positioning. Ramatra is like one of those weird things where because he has so much survivability with his block, he's a lot less dependent upon speed boost than some of the other brawl tanks. Like JQ, we talked about it earlier. Where like JQ in the, versus in the main mirror needs like a Lucy glue to her butt cheeks because if she gets walled without shout, she's just dead, right? But Ramatra, he's just gonna. So it's a bad ability. Um, and yeah, he has speed boost with Nemesis form as well. So it's a bad ability, in my opinion, uh, and how it functions, but it does open up more playmaking for your supports. All right, any questions? Because we're about to get back on the Junker Queen grind. Sounds like Timeless thinks that there's a little bit more space here to execute those dives. The question, will Tornado swap to Moira or will they stay the mirror? I think this map has enough space where it actually should be pretty difficult for this composition to dive. I would not be surprised if these guys stayed. I think there's a lot of space for your BAP to avoid Genji and Junker Queen, so in theory, you should be okay. Um, do I like this meta? I mean, it's not going to stick around for long, so it's fine for sure. I, I, but I, I generally am, am a big Ramatra hater. I think Ramatra is very quietly one of the worst characters to watch. I would say, I would go as far as say Ramatra is almost as bad as Orisa. <laughs> it's just less obvious. When playing Lucy in this comp, is Lucy majority of the time on heals and switches to speed when needing help with the positioning? Um, so Lucy is majority of the time on heals when he's pocketing a DPS. So you're basically just sitting on heals uh, when you're like standing on top of your Sojourn to deal with chip damage. Um, but the rule with Lucy is the same regardless of the composition. If you're moving, you're on speed. If you're not moving, you're on heals. It's that simple. It's the same in every composition in the history of Overwatch. There is no different rule for different tanks or DPS. For what reason is the Ram, Sig, and Junker Queen played? Ram is really, really strong. Sig is good versus the backlines that are popular right now, which are more poke-oriented. Um, and Junker Queen is decent and an individual strength that is decent versus the Baptiste. Junker Queen and Sigma are more like character hero strengths. I don't think they're particularly meta. Why won't this meta stick around for long? Malga. Um, I, I didn't watch the Wisp versus Timeless match, although we will be reviewing a couple of maps from that match uh, from POVs. Does the playstyle of the Junker Queen comp change significantly in the mirror as opposed to against Ramatra? Uh, yeah, yeah. There, there's, you could be a lot more frivolous with your Lucio positioning and with your Kiriko positioning in the mirror. Um, when you're playing into a Ram May, your, your Lucio has to help your Junker Queen out a lot more. But if you're playing a Junker Queen Mirror, it behaves a lot more like a dive where you have like, you know, your supports on angles and your DPS on angles and your tank is kind of doing their own thing. You think the Ram buffs were a mistake? I don't think they were a mistake. I just think that you would also, I would like if they also look at it, look at this Nemesis form as well. And I, I do think something like projectile speed and Omnic form would have been a better buff than damage. But I've talked about that a lot. Okay, let's, uh, let's take a look here. So I am a, I like... Premier Tornado's comp a little bit better here. I think it's something that probably Thomas has some reps on. I also like Thomas's rotation, where in theory they should be able to catch backline from either of these. But I feel like this composition is is this map is pretty open. I think Suravasa is um, maybe a little bit more enclosed, but I, I think this is like they picked this map, so I think I think this is how this works. Um, 
Where you can play Genji, you're not gonna pick it. Come on, man. It's irresistible. When it he's is. strong, oh, man, you just go. When you go crazy, you really hit a peak. That so the good news is that the Genji does allow them the pressure point, which forces people to come forward. And then as they come forward, there's an easier access to backline. So let's see. Yeah, I if I'm timeless here, I'm I'm considering abandoning point and like looking for a, a, a speed boost on the backline here. Yeah, see there there it is. There it is. There's the shout. There's the speed boost. There's the dash. Um, you can see Sam's even realizing it and goes back to his team, and then we're going to see a May wall. So, um, yeah, there's the May wall, and they catch Hawk, and then Hawk just dies. Ah, really well executed by Primus Tornado. Really well executed by Primus Tornado, but but I just am not a fan. I'm just not a fan. I'm curious where was Vega. Anyone see Vega? Vega alert, Vega. Cause like I see this and I'm like, like Vega, Vega has to get a boop here or something. Like they has to be able to create like the May alone, just the DPS and slow from her freeze is ridiculous. Like you have to, you have to create some sort of pressure there. Um you speed boost and shout stack. I think I think there's like a, a hard cap. Uh correct me if I'm wrong, Shaq. There's like a hard speed cap of like a certain percentage. So yeah. Um but yeah, like Vega needs to be here versus this comp. Like either that or unironically, Vega needs to be diving backline, like hard commit. Like if you're going to sell Hawk, let Hawk die fine. Put RuPaul in an angle with your Soge, three, two, one, shout engage from something like this. Like it's just, it's like they're not really caring for Hawk, nor are they really caring for, like caring for the enemy backline. Like I see one, two, three people from Timeless on top of Hawk and Hawk still dies. There's not a single person on this flank and Hawk still dies. Like you either need to commit to speed boosting and pocketing Hawk, or you need to commit to like, let Hawk screw off. You know, we hate queen, uh, we're misogynistic, you know? And then we just go for backline and let the queen die, you know? But, but they're not doing either. They're carrying queen, but then she dies anyway. It's just, it's not good. And again, I want to point out that Primus Tornado also played it really well. And, and I do think that Primus Tornado's comp, I, in my heart tells me is probably a little bit better right now. And on, on this map, on this map. The Devolve fights though, like this is really good punishment. It's really easy to kind of like, oh, we got to kill, we relax, you know, and you still have off angles to deal with, but, um, you know, good job from people to keep in their, uh, their calm. Oh, that's a brutal stagger. That's especially brutal in this point. You're getting one recontest now. Yeah, the Malga buffs are pretty severe, unquestionably. Um, but they, they, they always do this. They want Malga to be basically one tricked and ranked, and they'll nerf him in two weeks. They'll probably nerf his sustain, would be my guess. Not a big ultimate coming up, though. I mean, Rush is the yeah. first one online. It's going to be timeless, maybe using this one out, out the gate to gain some space. Yeah, this is just so much damage. You know, like, there's so much damage taken on this rotation here. I like how aggressively Sam is playing. There's the, 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 the oh, they catch Vega. Vega gets caught, so he get, have, they have to use Shout. There's the Kitsune. It might have been Suzu there as well, actually, too. There's the point pressure. There's the BAP window. They can they stall it perfectly, Sam does. They catch Sugar Free. Sugar Free messes up his dash, gets sucked in. There's the Suzu there. Now there's a totally free Blizzard. He's going to use Blizzard right there. Ah, it's not a good Blizzard. Come on, Sam. Ah, <laughs> jeez, guys. It's really hard to Blizzard in this. Like, let, let's be honest here. But, like, I think this is just a situation where, like, you just don't have to use it then. You just don't have to use it. You just don't have to use it. It's okay to sit and wait. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just, it's free, but it's free if you hit it. You know, like, it's free if you have a wall set up. The thing with Blizzard is you have to have a target and, and if the target has a speed boost, like Junker Queen did with her shout, you have to set it up properly. And he just, he didn't set it up properly. Ah, uh, you, um, being gaslit. Hydron dies on the off angle. The good news though, the, okay, the bad news for Prima Tornado is that they've dropped two to point when really they only needed Sam. To be honest with you guys, I wouldn't even be mad if Kaluj was like pushing around the high ground here uh, and they were able to just pocket Sam. Like Sam should never die here. Um, So we've got two people chasing Hawk and then there's every single off angle from Timeless. Good blade there. I don't know why he deflected that. Hawk does die though. Like what? What does Hawk die do? Does he just die slowly? I think he just dies slowly. I think they pop a uh, ram. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
So, so really messy fight. Um, the key thing here, though, is it's like, you know, even though I, th I think Primus kind of screws up their execution, they have another ult to dump that Timeless just doesn't have. So they're still working on that Junker Queen ult. They didn't even get a chance to use a Surgeon ult. So it's just like a differential of one ultimate, even if it's not particularly well executed. Oh, I just, mm. to work with high ground and low ground, but Sojourn on that point, a little bit more tough to, you know, get around and poke so, the teeth. Maybe this is this point I think a little bit more open is for seeker. Frankly, even worse for Timeless's comp. Even more open, yet still has wallable chokes. But yeah. The good news is that Timeless in theory has two ultimates, and um the bad news is that they might be running into a back window here if they wait too long. There's the Lucio Sojourn on the angle. That's a beautiful double shot there. Um Shidron, Shidron, that's it. But his deflect is down, so he gets frozen by Sam. I don't know where Sugar Free was, but that should not, he should not have died there. Guys, where the frick is Sugar Free? Does he use Dash there and get caught with his pants down? I don't really know what happens there, but Sugar Free freaking dies. So that's unfortunate. Um, Primus Tornado is able to just basically survive on point now. Again, Hawk is, has to be really careful here. That's a good shot there. There's the ult. That's pretty big. Uh, even though it's just only going to force Ice Block, he, because he hits the Ram too, it also forces Lamp, chips down HP. Now, can they actually follow up off of it? Because the problem is that he used his Shout to set that up, so you don't really have the ultimate to commit. So it's like, hey, you force resources, but because you don't really have your Shout, and because the space is so open, you can't even commit. And I, this is where like the lack of damage mitigation for Hawk is just like so, so sorely felt. Um, I just don't think that this is like, you look at that and you're like, how do they lose that, man? It's just like, they just don't have the comp for it. Like they don't have the composition to be able to close the space. The only thing I could say here is that like, you question whether the shout was needed. If Hawk could have positioned here somehow a little bit better to where he only needed to use his ultimate. So he shouts into the ultimate. And the reason he does that, I think, is to get extra distance out of the ultimate, but the problem is it just wasn't necessary. So then you force your ice block, you force shield, you force lamp, you force a lot of resources there. This is when you need to be committing. I need Vega on speed, and we need to be speeding onto Sam and chopping this guy's head off. Like, this guy needs to freaking die with shout, with speed, with carnage, and obviously the Gracie doesn't hit, which is pretty bad, but like, that, that, like that's, the, that's your window right there. That's your window. If you don't have shout there or speed boost or you miss your car, like, that's over. Like that, that's, that's your opportunity because you forced the CDs. You got the Overwatch 2 tank experience. You earned your dessert and you did nothing. And so I actually think that this isn't even a question of like, oh, he needed to hit the Gracie. They needed to have the shout. You have to go. I don't even think it's a question of like, because it's too late. You give them the opportunity to back window, it's over. I'm just like, I'm just not loving how Timeless is playing this. I think this is a question of like where Primus Tornado is so much better than their competition potentially that Timeless maybe isn't getting the reps that they need to like actually know how to play well versus this composition because they just are not executing well. The Primus Tornado looks so much more comfortable at marking, at creating space, about clearing angles, um, and now Hawk just swaps. So, you know, you're at a massive disadvantage here. You're essentially two points down, even though you have a bit of an old bank here. So do Tornado. Um, RuPaul just free freaking dies. I don't even know where RuPaul was. RuPaul was on the angle here. It's, I think, railed and then lands into a disruptor shot and just dies. So that's a free fight win. No, I can't watch it in replay viewer because the codes got wiped today. I have the codes, but they got wiped. So. And this is Primus Tornado. This is a breeze. I knew they would get wiped though, so I recorded some POVs for uh for some individual analysis later on though. It's so absolutely dominating performance. Hey Ryoko. Um absolutely dominating performance here. And the irony here is like it just keeps getting worse. Like this is this is an absolute garbage point for Genji. Like May is so much better here. Um, even just from the poke damage alone, like they've they've continued to fight like on the entire like I guess left or right side of the map, whatever. Like there's no there's like high grounds on these points over here. That you can kind of utilize this Genji, but th these points are terrible, 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 terrible. I mean, I guess there's chokes here too for May. I, I, I just, I just don't think. I, to be honest with you, I think May is just better everywhere you go here. New patch got wiped. And again, Primus Tornado used nothing, nothing for this fight. Absolutely jack all. I like the rollout there from Blue. For a little bit of high ground doesn't quite force deflect though. 
drone. Gotta be careful that defense. Uh, Hawk? Where's Hawk? Where's our pal Hawk? Does Sam finally hit a mail? A Hawk overextends. Hawk is trolling. Hawk has pushed up way too far. The Hawk is dead. Should be dead. They do Katsune him, and they do beat him, and they Suzu'd him. They don't Suzu him. They did Suzu him. They must have Suzu'd him. He would have died. So that that's a disaster. <laughs> From really, really not a good push from Hawk there. That, that's that's too too much posturing. I think they might have been looking for a blade, uh, maybe an Ajax, but then he ends up getting caught by Blizzard. So really nice catch by Sam. Um, again, great patience from Primus Tornado as well to not over ult this. Uh, Kaluj is just going to chill. Kaluj is going to chill and then going to pop his Annihilation, push back in, and, and really Primus Tornado, unless Seeker hits a shot, this is over. Maybe a little bit early with the Kaluj push there, maybe a little bit more patience, but it'd still be okay. Yeah. There's just too many ults here. Using both support ults just to get your Ram out of jail is like something else. Nice shot from Seeker there. This should be a 3-0. Running away with this map. This should be his 3 0. RuPaul probably swaps here. Starting to feel some pressure, right? And sugar, sugar free, yeah. Wouldn't be spicy. RuPaul go to the bath. Just take the mirror. Yeah, I think it, it's just a brawl comp shell up, and Ramacho is really strong. That's why. The Kiriko is just because they were playing like a Kiriko Junker Queen dive comp, but then yeah. And honestly, the series can really spiral out of control if you lose this map here. Map went no time, and this is almost last fight scenario as well. Like you could let Timeless touch point, screw around a little bit, and then Bap window. Doesn't really need to be the one. And if that bat, if that Ramble doesn't get value, this is this is it. The difference between Rush and Brawl doesn't matter. However, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> Uh, what is happening here? I think Timeless is setting up some of the juicers. I think. I think they're setting up some off angles here. I think Soja's on the high ground here. Yeah, see, this is classic. This is classic Timeless. Like, this is something that Timeless has did better than any team that we saw. Um, it was definitely a part of their playstyle, and they overused it at points in time. But they they do such a good job in situations where they don't want to push controlling off angles. Um, cheers, mate. Um, like right now. Tornado? I don't know why Tornado drops. I don't know why Tornado drops because they're playing with Bap Window here. They're not really looking to push in at all. If anything, Timeless is the one that wants to push in. They have the ram all right. Um, but I clearly Timeless is like, ah, we're we're just gonna we're we're content to sit still and look at where Vega goes. So Vega Sojourn on the off angle, and the positions for Prima Tornado, uh, in terms of like the off angles, are so much worse that. Even, I mean, even look at Sugar Free here. Like, look at Sugar Free. Sugar Free actually starts to take an angle and then gets marked by Kaluj. But there's like one, two, three different angles and like one angle from Primus Tornado. And the reason why that's so important is because there is no cover for Ultraviolet right now. There's no cover for Sam right now. Sam is getting shot in the butt cheeks, right? Ultraviolet's completely out of position. They have to use the wall defensively. Kaluj is getting shot in the back from three different ways. And so... I don't know how Sugar Free dies there. I think it's just a damage boosted rail, but I, I really like Timeless's setup here. I really do. Um, it's just a shame that Sugar Free died there because that, that's so unnecessary. Great speed boost push there. RuPaul's still alive. Um, Timeless with a superior setup for sure. Vega gets caught. Vega dies. Um, but yeah, just it, basically, this is an example of where I like Timeless's setup a lot better. I think Primus Tornado's setup was really poor, but um, Primus Tornado had hit the hit their shots. You know, they made them more mechanical plays. Because you could also look at this fight here and be like, Lucio Sojourn on an off angle, sugar free here. If if one of them hits an angle, like hits a shot, it's over. Like, and they have a much higher chance of hitting it. But you know, you can load the dice and still lose. That's what happens. Yeah, there's no real difference between Rush and Brawl. Some people will be like, oh, Rush is like a Lucio speed comp. Like, people would generally classify Rush as like any comp that has Lucio. Like, even if it's like a Winston or a Junker Queen comp. Whereas Brawl is like a short range dive, a short range tank, like a Junker Queen, Ryan, Orissa. Whereas like a Rush might be like a Winston Lucio. But I, I really don't think it matters. People can play semantics till the cows come home. So it, it doesn't matter. It doesn't, it doesn't, there aren't rules that are applicable to Rush that aren't applicable to other comps. It's just basic Overwatch macros or whatever you want to do. <sighs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, okay. Um, all right. Well, we're on mapped four now. We're zooming through. Any questions so far? I think Tornado, I, I, Timeless is just screwing themselves with their compositional choices, to be honest with you. Whether it was King's Row, um, 
you know, that map in particular felt like really not a good choice. Um, you know, and then when it comes to the mirror, I think things can get pretty messy from both sides in terms of ultimate usage. Um, I think Vega has been caught a lot out of position um, just because of the amount of different things that he's trying to do. Uh, yeah. What percentage of the positioning rotations in these games are practice and what percentage of them are from players finding out as the game progresses? Um, most, I would say there's probably like 60, 70% of the stuff that they do is stuff that they've practiced in scrims. But a lot of the stuff that they practice in scrims is just stuff that they try. Like, it's not like they go into like custom games and practice rotations, you know? They just go like, hey, this worked. Let's try this in the scrimmage. It worked. Well, I'll try that in a game. But there's also a certain percentage of things that are just kind of like improvised in the match itself as well. Is Ryan just not the brawl pick anymore? Um, he's just not as strong of a brawl tank. No, not as strong as a brawl tank. Ramacho just got giga buffed. So, um, yeah. Do they have coaches for flash ops? Yeah. I think Wheats is coaching Primus Tornado um, and McGravy is coaching Timeless, but I, I don't really know how much those coaches are actually doing, to be honest with you guys. Especially the amount of time that they've had to prepare. I, I imagine it's just more ornamental than anything else, especially with these players. Yeah, Ryan's not terrible, but there's just other tanks that are just better right now. And Ryan, and the thing with Ryan is like Ryan could still, in theory, struggle a little bit with Bastion. So I think Ryan would need, for Ryan meta to come back in, you need like, I don't know, there's just so many other characters that are strong right now. Because like you could say that like you could nerf Bastion and nerf Ramatra a little bit, and then Ryan could theoretically be played in Brawl. But then at that point, it's also like, um, you know, would you not just play like Tracer Dive at that point? Yeah, they're, they're very scrappy for sure. This is not like clean, classic, juicy Overwatch. This is this is messy. This is not Overwatch League level macro, although these are Overwatch League level players. Ooh, ooh, Sam gets his head blown off. So I guess we could talk a little bit about compositions here. I imagine Hawk will probably go Diva here. I can't imagine he stays Sigma on first fight, first point. Yeah. Um, basically, it's like a quasi dive spam where it's like you have a lot of high grounds, so dive characters are great. Um, you have a lot of sight lines, so sniper characters are great. So you play a little bit of a combo of both, uh, you know, and really whatever one you pick is dependent on the character strength. I think Sam is a really good Echo. Sugar Free is a pretty darn good Tracer. Um, so they're going to kind of lean into those strengths. Now, the Brig is a kind of an interesting one where I don't think if you didn't see Brig here, the team would be like, hey, let's play Winston. Although that, that would be, in theory, something they could do. I don't think it's likely. But the, what the Brig does do is she does deny a little bit of the D.Va aggression. She does deny a little bit of the Tracer aggression. Um, and she is also really good at packing your DPS. So you could look at this and be like, you know, could they play like, you know, Kiriko in this? And, and I think you could. I think you could. Um, but it, it's probably not something that a lot of teams will want to whip out. Um, what should D.Va do here? So D.Va has like kind of like a, a, a three-man job. D.Va is probably one of the most complicated characters in Overwatch 2. So she has to push cart. She has to contest angles um, and prevent them from like, you know, the Echo or Widow or Honor or whatever from landing nades and stickies and all that kind of shenanigans. Uh, and then also she has to look for opportunities to not only contest them, like, but also actually kill them. Um, so big thing here with D.Va is just that it's basically a character that doesn't take quite as much damage as Winston and has a little bit more dynamic. So because it's really hard to just three, two, one, dive high ground, yay. Because it's really hard to do that, that's why teams go D.Va, because you're not going to be able to do that as much into the Brig uh, and into the High Ground. So teams are going to go D.Va um, knowing that. And also, obviously, Hawk and Kaluge are primarily D.Va players as well. Uh, Card is just so important. It's very difficult to dive this High Ground. Card is really important, and because of that, that's why teams play D.Va. Even if you didn't have Kaluge and Hawk here, you'd still want to play D.Va here if you could. This is Widow. I am here for it. Secret hits of the shot. Love to see it. Don't use this crosshair, kids. Single green dot. Single green dot. Sugar free gets blasted. Single green dot. I think he might have been in this room here. I'm not even sure. He knows where Hydran is, though. Sugar free, though. That is a kill to start it off. Oh. That's silly. Yeah, that that's that's not a smart duel from Seeker. The reason why it's not a smart duel from Seeker, what's the problem with this duel from Seeker, chat? It's, just, it's a minor thing. See if you guys can pick it up. What's, what's the problem? 
Informational disadvantage? Exactly, exactly. He doesn't really know. He can predict where Hydran is. So if anything, this duel might be okay if he'd actually had his hy crosshair and Hydran, but he's greeting for Ultraviolet, and Hydran knows where he is. So you see the crosshair differential here? So then when Hydran peaks here, he's like, oh, crap, but it's too late. Hydran already has his crosshair on him. So I, I think... I think at that point in time, it would have been better to assume that Hydran was going to peak that, and then it becomes almost a 50-50 at that point in time. Actually, maybe even a slight advantage for Seeker, but he was greeting for Ultraviolet. Oh, and Hydra punishes him. Okay, okay, okay. All in favor of only watching Widows? I? Now, because the high ground and defensive positions are so strong in this map, I actually think this map is probably in my top three to rework. Uh, not rework, but to you know how they did the adjustments in Gibraltar? I think this is probably in my top three maps to adjust. Um, then, you know... This is very often a long first point hold. A long first point hold. I would probably say Circuit Royale, Numbani in this map to fall into my category. Ooh, those are good shots. So it's a lot of shuffling. It's a lot of fishing for pushing for cart, fishing for an anti-nade onto the enemy diva so that you can whittle her down, you know, fishing for a sleep dart on the enemy diva. Because if you get a sleep dart on the enemy diva and then you headshot her and then you nade her, you might be able to demech her. Um, you know, obviously jockeying for widow. It's a lot of like feeling each other out, right? Um, oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, those three are probably my worst, I think, off the top of my head. I'd have to think a little bit more, but I think those are my top three. I think Powder Isu is also pretty bad, too. But yeah, they get... How do they demac Hawk here? I think Hawk goes up. Yeah, Hawk goes for a little bit too aggressive of a play. Gets body blocked by Kaluj. Doesn't eat nade, and then dies. So a little bit of an int there. I'm not even sure what he saw. What does he see? I think he might see the Ultraviolet was... Low. No, he sees OG. Yeah, OG was pretty low. OG was really low. Okay, so he goes for play. It wasn't a stupid play. It just doesn't quite eat the nade. So that's unfortunate. That's going to kill your cart push for a long time. So even though the cart is in actually in a pretty decent spot, um, and then smokes RuPaul, and then, yeah. Nasty on the Widow. Okay, okay. He can't escape. And that Widow, is here bottom left? They know, maybe? They know, they know. He's not sure. Okay, okay. Yeah, Hydron... Seeker's got to answer this, right? Whether it's a kill on the Hydron or, or just some kind of opening pick. Oh my Ooh. gosh. It was. Took it though. Took the chance. I like it. I like taking the chances with it. Holding onto this walls on defense. Now, the key thing to note here is that Sam goes Genji. Now, I like Genji. I don't like Genji as much for late first point, but it's pretty good for early first point. And by that, I mean that this area here, like bouncing around on the high grounds, it's a little bit less vulnerable to Widowmaker. The other really crucial thing is that one of the problems with this comp is the lack of nano target. Is you can nano diva and that's okay, but it's really easy to peel off nano diva with Brigitte, with the enemy diva, and so on. But you talk about Genji here, nano Genji can kill people. Nano Genji can kill people, uh, even with a little bit of peel here. Um, so I, I think there's a real chance here um, that, like, Prime, uh, I mean, I, I, I like Primus Tornado's position right now. I like it a lot, not just because they've won the fight, but also because uh, I, I think their comp has a much better flow for 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 old value. I mean, pulse bomb is obviously still scary, but there's a there's a real opportunity here. Love that save, the and Genji is, is also really freaking good at controlling the enemy widow. It, so the like seeker overextends. Oh my god! <sighs> Scouting information. You can save it, so the moment seeker. So many pings him. Seeker's not sure. Oh a little bit of shield, and that's god. it. He hits the shot. Oi, what a sleep by UV. It's really hard for them to dive high ground, guys. Like, there's only like two paths to get there, and they're very predictable. These guys are popping off. Seeker taking some L's here on the offense. It's a tough spot. Ox gonna reset because it takes forever to build back your mech, and they just don't have to shoot you. Mirror sights. This was your moment to have an advantage, and now it's just another 50 50. The defense looks unbreakable right now. I love counter sights. I don't think there's. It's actually even worse for the uh, attackers because the defender, Genji, has like full information on you and will tell you exactly, like, he's in a much better position than your tracer. Oh, oh, nice Luge. That's a huge shot. Luge is really low. That gives him a little bit of extra cart push. And because they have to back out, there's the nano blade. Sure, if I would have nano bladed necessarily. Wait, they they nanoed? Oh, they nano bladed because they nano diva. Okay, I I like the nano blade a little bit better because of the nano diva. 
So you're under a lot of pressure here. And this is what I talked about with the Nano, right? OG does rally, though. That's a lot of ultimates. Maybe I don't like Blade there. Maybe I like the Nano. Rally to counter the Nano Diva. And then save Blade and Bomb. Blade will force Rally, which then kind of puts you back in a neutral standpoint. So there's a rally right now for Vega. It's a big opening. That that would be what I would recommend. And this is the kind of thing I'm talking about where like I'm I'm doing all these like thinking about these things. And it's like these guys are just not they haven't had the reps to be able to figure out these ult trades, right? So they it's more like a rank environment where they they pop nano diva, so we just vomit three ultimates out, you know? When you only really needed two. So it's it's easy for me to critique. Yes. A lot harder to actually execute. People are going to instantly know where to hide. Oh, we'll hide on with a really nice uh, peak spot there. They're actually going to give up a little bit of space here. Um, we'll hide on with a really nice, uh, backline has made the rotation. Time now, crucially, Timeless has rotated top. And some of you guys might be going like, well, why did they not rotate top to begin with? Because this is something I recommend ranked people do more. If you play this map in ranked, um... And the enemy team is all like stuck here. I think more supports in DPS should take the time to rotate up the stairs, up this way. I think it's really, really powerful if you get some sort of support. The question is, is why are they doing it now? Why haven't they been doing it for like the last three and a half minutes? The answer is because good teams will match you on this corner. They will throw an anti-nade. They will, you know, Diva will come flying in there or, you know, the Genji will dash through you or whatever, and they will smoke you. Um absolutely obliterate you on this choke. They will match you to a fitter. Not something that a lot of teams will do in rank, but you know, really, really well high-level teams will match you on that corner, and there's no really way for you to disengage. The reason why they're doing it now is because they have Rally, and Primus Tornado has nothing. So if they do try to meet them on the corner, and they're going to run into a Rally, and they're going to lose. So that's why this is a really smart rotation from Timeless, knowing that, hey, we have a rally advantage, we have a brawl advantage, they can't actually match us here. Let's f brute force the high ground here. Let's get rid of them out here. And you can see Hydrant's already rotating before they've even committed rally because they know what's going to happen. They know what's going to happen. And in fact, I'm actually curious to see if Vega even needed to commit the rally at all. Because there's a real chance here that Primus Tornado just, yeah, they just S key right out of it. So that's not, it's actually a pretty bad rally from Primus Tornado, uh, from Timeless. From Vega, third time's the charm. Um, that 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 means to be something that you know that they're going to give up. If they contest you, then you pop the rally. But you can't really chase with new rally, right? So they try to chase; it doesn't work. It's too it's too it's too slow. You don't have a speed boost of that. If you had a speed boost of that rally, it worked, but, but but they don't. And why does Hawk bomb? Is it just a Yolo bomb? I think Hawk just Yolo. Yeah, Hawk Yolo bombs. Oh, I wish we could see this. Not too much of an issue. I think he, Hawk just YOLO bombs. Hawk rank bombs it. Not something you see very often. Um, Iron catches RuPaul, who is probably playing a little bit sloppy with rally armor, because you're like, oh, I'm 300 HP, but you're 300 HP, and that's exactly what a uh, Widow headshot is. And really, Timeless is on the, on, on the timer now, because, uh, well, I guess both teams are. They both lost their honor. Uh, all right, Sugar Free, what do you got? Even a pulse on Diva here is, is huge. Because you'll force the, uh, the, the, the bomb. Seeker readjusts his angle. Overtime is procced. RuPaul's going to go Kiriko to come back faster. Ultraviolet is not. Body shot there. And he get a pulse bomb. He gets the left angle, maybe? Nope. There's the nade on Vega. Oh. Oh, this is actually a cute little play there on the angle. Um, OG gets caught from main. Really nice shot by Seeker. There's the counter dive. They're able to peel it off. There's the bomb. They can now, honestly, just pulse bomb the Diva there. Bam, she's 1 HP huge. Ah, really nice plays there. Really nice plays all the way around. Wow. So the rally push was the big brain all along. It forced UV out of position for the Diva bomb. <laughs> <laughs> what tracer skins are you using? Yeah. There aren't many good tracer skins at all. I think tracer skins are pretty bad. For the poster girl of Overwatch 2, she's, uh, she's got some bad skins. Yeah, Seeker, he's got to find some kind of purchase, but look, it's going to be another counter wall. 
I ever played that diva bomb? Which one? Kaluja's? Or do you mean the one afterwards? We we can't see it. That's the problem. We can't. We literally can't see it. Arguably the most pure display of Junk does have some pretty bad skins. That's true. Yeah, Seeker, he's got to find some kind of purchase, but look, it's going to be another counter. So, Infrasight, mirrored by Hydran a few seconds later. Ooh, they're not ready for that. That's a shot that Seeker wants back for sure. Blue is pretty low. Cute little setup there from Timeless's backline. Now, this is the funny thing. I actually, I actually don't hate the Kiriko all that much because you think about it like this way. It's like you're losing out a little bit of healing. You're losing out a nano value, but like nano's not really that useful anyway. And the Kiriko basically can play like a third DPS. And so if Hawk plays really disciplined and is, and is going to end up pretty much just cart botting anyway, um, Rubal could basically just play like a hard flanker with Sugar Free. I, I actually wonder if this is better on this point. I actually wonder if the Kiriko Tracer is better. Um, like, especially if you're like coming, trying to come up with a solution to break it, you know? Um, I, I don't know. Because it just feels so bad to, to make space, you know? Like, at least the Kiriko like actually gives you like an off angle, gives you a flank opportunity. It gives you like plays and Kitsune Rush is, is is fine. Like you can actually clear some point progress with it. Cheeky, more than one way. There's a Kitsune in high ground. There's the Nano Blade, and what do you Nano Blade? You Nano Blade. He saves his dash though. What the frick is Seeker doing? What is Seeker doing, guys? Run! Run, you idiot! Run! Why is he doing this? Why is somebody hit him? Somebody stop him? RuPaul literally shuts the... They have... It's a nanoblade! Run away! Sam saves his dash, but still literally just walk away and you've wasted the entire nanoblade. Run, dude, why is he walking back into repeak? This guy is not real. Hit scan players need to be put into a lab and examined. No way that you are a real individual human being. No, no! Why he even goes in again? That, that just is so bothersome to me. Bit of mine kills him though. That's annoying. Guy's a fraud. Anybody who says Seeker is good at this game is lying. It's the, the content rot. He spent too much time streaming. Only alpha males like myself can handle it. Okay, what what is happening elsewhere? Um. Okay. Kaluj gets back in there, clean up. But at the same time, Vega's on a mission. Ends up killing OG. Bomb. R Vega is still. <laughs> Vega is killing your backline. Um, and is going to live. So, Seeker fumbled so that Vega could sprint. Um, wow, okay. Definitely Team Apple Juice, no shot. Team Apple Juice is Seeker. There's the rally recon test. It should be very kiteable by Timeless. It is. And this is what I'm talking about with like the impatience here. You need to be able to heal up Kaluj and trust that Kaluj is, or somebody is going to be able to touch the last possible second because this rally is going to do jack all versus a disciplined team. Just take angles, back out, disengage, reengage. It, it, it just it, there's just nothing to push. Now I understand again that like rally, it's really hard to get value out of unless you're Vega. Um, but this is exactly the problem, right? You want to push, you want to push, you want to push. You end up pushing into three, five, twelve. 37 different off angles and you haven't even cleared the high ground here or ah, and seek it just opens up an angle for a heaker seek heaker seeker himker uh to hit a shot and then that's it yeah it, it's just it's just a, an all-around bad recontest from streaming they need to be much more patient much more calculating and that's something that these na teams just don't do very often now you're on a third point though not much time on the clock, but, but you're still here right now. Like, this is a steal for Timeless. Like, Timeless was, was like, cheering and slapping each other in the back and popping off champagne balls the fact that they even got this far. Hawk should swap. Well, I don't, maybe. Hawk could swap. Where is Hawk? Oh, Hawk is swapping. Yeah, RuPaul can swap too. Um, this is more of, a, like, a narrow point, so the high ground control is less important. It's just, like, wide open space, so... Um, you could just kind of anchor on point. 
brute force high ground. Sig, wanna up the presence in the neutral. Give up a little chance uh, to dive in and finish kills, but just it's gonna be hard for Tracing. Woohoo! Yeah. Indefinite presence that Sigma provides. Oh, sugar free. All right. Now the key thing here is that you brute force cart, you brute force cart, you brute force cart, you brute force cart, and then at some point, if you want to, you can stop pushing cart and rotate and clear high ground and then resume pushing cart. Um. Because you have the Sigma Shield, because you have the BAP Sustain, you, it's pretty easy for you just like brute force space. No way, Hydra doesn't kill. Okay, nice little pressure. That's a nice anti nade on the back line, though. That's going to force uh, a lamp. Lamp is broken, and Vega just freaking dies. That's, there's your Nano Diva, though. That is the one thing with this composition. It is a little bit more vulnerable to just AFK Nano pressure, especially when, 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 when UV hits nades like that. Yeah, and Clues able to get big dividends with it. That, that, that Nano Diva, typically, Brig and Bap are just so hard to kill. There's so much mutual healing. There. Did they not go high ground with the Sigma? They should have. They Once they get Cart to here, there's no advantage to staying on the floor because you're just giving Diva, Genji, and Ana free engages. You've done the reason you don't go high ground immediately is because Cart's way over here. And you're like, ah, we win the fight, but we have to go back and push Cart. So you push Cart to here, and then you do the free rotation to, to high ground with your Sigma Shield. Force UV to rotate all the way out this way, and then drop your. You actually don't even drop. You just have your tracer push cart. That's how you do it. You can even do that in ranked. I don't know if you guys have that level of coordination, but that's even as an individual, that's like the way to approach it in ranked. Um, but yeah, if they that, that that's a huge. So that's why they died to Nade Nano Divas because they were still on the floor. Nobody knows why. Post bomb still for sugar free. Hydrin. Oh my gosh. But you see, there's so much staying power from the Sigma wherever he's at. So if you could have abused the... What happens here? I I'm not going to lie with you guys. Tornado should not lose this fight. Tornado should not lose this fight. Seeker goes Sojourn, which is like fine, I guess. Um, like you just brawl up and point. But Rally Mirror... Nade, Ana, uncontested Ana on high ground. Uncontested, essentially, Widowmaker. And coming up on a blade, I think even with the flocks here, I, I, even the window, I, I think Tornado's position, because because Timeless has to control Cart, Tornado should win this. Yeah, it's only going to take one pick from Hydra to blow this wide open, though. Everyone's got to be careful. Yeah, the There's the rally. Ooh, now OG needs to live. OG needs to live. There's Lamp and Rally Mirror. You're good. Oh, oh, man. Okay, so they go for the play. They don't quite get it. I think OG should just stop pushing at this point. So I think maybe a little bit of that pressure in the Sigma was unnecessary. Nah, that's just, that's just sloppy. Man. Man. I mean, yeah, they were trying really hard to make a play there, but again, they have lamps, so you need to understand that like your first attempt isn't always going to succeed. That's the NA hive mind, you know what I'm saying? Right there. Is it's always oh, thinking one step ahead, but not two steps ahead. So if the one step doesn't work, they die. I mean, how many times have we seen that in this review on 12 different maps? We just saw at the previous point with OG's recontest with Rally. If the initial push doesn't work, they die. It's going to be bathed in the Matrix. Oh, and Antio Vega saved by the lab. Can they actually take him down? Yes, the better move would have gone top with Sigma, 100%. It's not even a question. And the better move for Timeless here would have been to simply either do the push that they did. Like, where even is the BAP window? Does anyone even know where the BAP window was? Was the BAP window on the flank? Yeah, it's a BAP window on the flank with Sojourn. So then they counter push with Rally? But like at this point in time, you've already done your job. Like if you're if you're a Primus Tornado, you don't need to keep pushing. 
Matty on Vega, saved by the lamp. Can they actually take him down? Hydron still trying to line up for some shots here in the back line. Seeker just pressuring this front line as OG ends up falling. Oh, yeah, that's anyway. Cool. Yeah, and overtime spawns here. It's gonna be rough to eat. Oh, good shot, man. Damn, he's got held off. And I don't think the initial push by OG was bad. And to be very clear, the whole push, push, push thing is not OG only. It is overall. I love to um, default skin on Winner, I will say. It's one of my favorite skins, actually, on, uh, on Winnermaker. Hydra's so aware of just every pass. Um, I think, I don't know that Space has ever been the best at their respective role, as best at his respective role, to be honest with you. I think Space has been a solid mid-tier tank on teams where he was, I've never found Space to be better than like, a, he was, he was good, he was good, I, I don't know that he was ever the best, he was a bit one-dimensional. No Ana, no Batiste on the support lineup, so Winston, no one's really going to be breaking that bubble. I like this pick from I think he was better. It was, he was better on Sigma than he was in Diva. I think his Diva was lacking. Both widows missing there. Well, maybe Hydron wouldn't have missed if there was <laughs> there wasn't a shield in Seeker's way protecting him. Yeah, the pressure just keeps coming in one after the other. And I think the Genji's okay. It's weird that they're playing the Winston variant, though. Definitely unusual. A little bit more aggression. Maybe they think that they can get... So that the Winston variation is more of like, hey, we have Genji, who can directly can dive high ground easier than Tracer on this point. So, uh, you know, maybe we can pair the Winston up with it. And obviously, like, it does give you a huge spike in ult value because Primal's, like, way better than Bomb. Um, oh, here's the body shot. <laughs> Sugar-free? Hello? This is the price nice of, of running the Did he not have recall or was he just like egoing it? Not quite as good at clearing out enemy tanks. Oh, here's the body shot. That's such a huge shot. A body shot is normally as good as a kill on a tracer. Or a headshot even, oh. sorry. That wow. was close. How do you not stay scope for that kill? That's crazy. Uh-oh. Well, my didn't need to. I, I don't think the Winston's that bad. Wait, RuPaul's? Wait, 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 wait. RuPaul's and Kiriko? Weird. So the thing with the Kiriko is, you know, we talked about it when you have a lot of space in second point, you know, you could do a lot of things, but I actually really don't like the Kiriko on first point here. I think that because you have the high ground advantage, um, I think you have a much better, I don't think Kiriko's ability to TP around and take off angles is really as useful on first point defense as it is on second point. I don't like it. I don't like it. Talk about not having a nano target, but but it doesn't. But you, that that's one dimensional. I think nade value is really really high and pressuring cart. Um, I think on defense you absolutely have a nano target. That the nano target is mostly a problem on attack because it's really hard to engage from on attack. But you can actually engage quite easily with defensive tra like a nano tracer on defense or a nano tracer on diva. Way better. Way 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 better. I I think the Kirko choice is not good. Um. <laughs> The irony here is that the Kiriko chase is not good, but it makes the Winston choice also not particularly good. Because when you don't have an Ana to secure a kill on, there's a lot less motivation to play a dive with Winston. What Tornado should do here is they should go D.Va. <laughs> because there's nothing to dive. Like the Brig is too hard. The Kiriko can just TP away. So you go D.Va and you just turtle on point. No, RuPaul's in defense. RuPaul did not counterpick. RuPaul's on defense. RuPaul did not counterpick. So Tornado rolls on on Winston, assuming Ana. RuPaul makes what I think is a slightly inferior choice to the Kiriko, at least on first point. And, and then they get baited on a Winston. Kind of funny. Kind of funny. Isn't D.Va counter win? Yeah, soft counter. Yep, yeah, soft counter. But you can, you can play it quite well. It's like one of those situations where this is a really tough defense to break. So having a really good nano target is great. But uh, Primal and Nano Winston is a lot worse than the Kiriko. A lot worse. It's a lot harder to nail her down. Like, you can kill Brick potentially, but um, the irony here is that RuPaul's slightly subpar choice has made Luge going Winston the real subpar choice. <laughs> I mean, there it is, right there, right? Like, they, I mean, he's one HP, just TPs away, so. Um, and then Sam, what happens with Sam? Samuel? He doesn't get the kill. He should have gotten the kill. That's a that's a mechanical misplay. Seeker is one HP. 
And there's no matrix there from Hawk either. Like there's a huge opportunity right there. Like that, that he has to die there. I mean, really, you look at that and you're like, RuPaul should have died and Seeker should have died there at the same time. Will they kill RuPaul? They will not kill RuPaul. Oh, they will kill RuPaul. Okay. Not a, not a terrible start. Like even though I'm like nitpicking here, this is a great start. Um, would be a, uh, yeah, it's a good start. Like it, it, this is such a defender advantage thing that this is, this is a really good start. So you can disengage here. You're going to need to disengage here, but you, you're basically almost in like last fight territory. Hydra needs to get out of here. Oh, Hydra, this is a terrible spot. Okay. Thank you. Um, yeah. So. Timeless is there comes a little bit more awkward with this Kiriko. Uh, not that much oh, that that's a backbreaker right there. That is a backbreaker right there. You can't do that. You can't you can't die out of the Widowmaker. It's not even like, oh, Hydran sucks. It's just a little bit unfortunate. It's just a little bit unfortunate because this is it, right? I mean, look at the old bank here, guys. One, two, three, four, five. They don't have Pulse Swam anymore. They don't have Rally yet. They don't even have Infrasites yet. So this is like, this is the time when you were like nano or you, you primal in uh, and then you just nano blade their, 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 their brig and, and she's dead. Or you nano, or you primal, you force the Kitsune. Like you, nano, primal, and blade will kill this backline together. It's harder, but it's doable. Um, oh, and then they commit the nano as well. This might not even force the rally. Oh, Arg. Honestly, chat, I'm not going to lie with you guys. At this point in time, Wait, who's he even going for? I think he's looking for Widow. Or no, he's going for Brig. But he gets whipped. And then he gets juked. And then he gets juked again. And then he gets whipped. Oh, jeez, guys. Oh, that is just tough. And all of this while down one, and then committing the nano, and then now all of a sudden, Vegas doesn't have to rally until like seven years, and then they commit primal and rally. Oh my gosh, guys. That's it. That's it. That's the defense right there. That's it, right? Did they get full health? They get full health, don't they? Yep. That's it. That's it. That's it. You cannot do this. I, I did not. You cannot. When you're down one, if you do not hit that old spike, it's over. It's, it's Jover, guys. No spoilers. Screw it. Too late. Again, the counter wall by the defending widow and seeker. I mean, so the only thing that happens here is Hydran has to hit a shot. She's running away, but I mean, kind of like Hydran did. That's the only way they win. I know it dominated on that first corner, but he. Because I don't even like. I, well, I guess they can. But they could. They could build. A, they could have built a nano here. They could have built a nano. That, that's 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 one thing they got going for. Them. But again, it's like how much kids. Oh wow, that was a nice stick. How much can? How much like will the nano get value? Right. Um. Oof. Will the nano get value because like if you, you're going into Kiriko Brick? Yeah, the lack of a tracer means sugar free is a little bit uh a little bit uncontested, honestly. Sam, maybe a little bit more threatening when it comes to clearing out the tanks and diving the enemy. I, I really don't think the Genji choice was really all that bad. You just have to hit the old spike, you know? Like if anything, the Genji was in theory really strong here and it's definitely tapered off in the back half, but it's the same problem with Tracer. Like Tracer is, you know, is better in the second half. So it's fine, but then you get the Genji that helps you clear off the space here. Even the Winston, right? Helps you clear off the space here. Then you get to this open space here where it's like, okay, yeah, your characters aren't quite as good, but you have an ult bank. You blew your ult bank, you're, oh, it's over, right? They played the Winston Genji to control and win this first section. Remember how much harder that was for Timeless, right? It's because they were playing Diva Tracer and to an extent. I think Diva is okay at pushing, but yeah, anyway. This point is not as good for that. So, But you have your ults to carry you over, but then you completely flub your ults. Yeah, you're kind of screwed. They're kind of screwed. Should they have swapped at this point? No, I don't think so. I think you have to play for the Nano Winston. I think you have to play for the Nano Winston. I think that's why they're even Tracer here. Like, they're, they're just having to play for something, you know? Um, oh, that's a huge shot. I'm surprised he didn't have that Venomind, actually. There's the early bubble. Next bubble cycle, they're going to 100% Nano Winston. Oh. Hydran really shouldn't be there. I'm not going to lie. Hydran really should be trying. They should be trying to set up. I guess Hydran has to worry a little bit about cart. Or like, really, you shouldn't have both of your dive DPS here. One of these DPS needs to be controlling this flank here. Um, 
And and honestly, like I actually think maybe one of even the support should consider uh, like sending Brig up here potentially. Um, I think you have to maybe not the Brig, but ugh. and then again, it's just terribly timed. So the Nano Monkey comes in. Hydron's already dead. Seeker lives, but because there's no follow up from Hydron, people should have died there that they don't. Like even Hawk there should have been demacked instantly. Instead, he's able to live. He's able to selfly bomb. There's no tracer follow up, so he's able to safely remac. Tracer's there. Tracer Hawk dies, and this fight goes entirely differently. I mean, OG also rallies. What does OG rally? Nano. Oh, OG almost dies, so he has to rally. That's that's unfortunate because that rally was needed. Like, there's no way an Ana Brig should die to a solo D.Va. The rally should have been used, like, now to clean card. So, again, it's just a, c a cacophony of ultimate errors that, like, are goof-ups that force up, force out bad ultimates. And then now Timeless is just able to double stack support ults and it's over. Like, this is, this is done. Should be done. Should be done. I don't know why we're turning on Kaluge. Hello, hello, Kaluge is primal. Earth to Timeless. Yeah, okay, so he eventually RuPaul. Yeah. Yeah, no worries, Max. Is the Divas roll here just to sit cart? Largely, yeah. I mean, largely uh, that and peel occasionally, but yeah. Um, I, I don't know. Just just poor, poor old execution there. Um, Going to be a grind for really everybody, but again, I, I think the, you know, it is what it is. Okay, any questions so far? We are on map five. And I, I did catch the end of this one, and I won't spoil it for you guys, but it, it's a pretty good map. Um, I caught the end of this map. <laughs> I actually don't know that it would have mattered, you need to... I don't think it would have mattered. I know what you're referring to. I don't think it would have mattered. I think it was very touchable. Um, I don't know. So far, Corpse Verse, it's hard to say. It's hard to say. It's been pretty back and forth. I think Hawk has played relatively well at points. I think Timeless, when they've looked their worst, they have struggled on the Junker Queen comp. They tried to make it work. They did not, did not look good into the Sigma Sojourn Mirror, or the Sigma, Ramatra Sojourn Mirror. And that's where Primus Tornado. But Primus Tornado has looked really bad with ults. Really, really bad with ults. I think the ult planning execution from Timeless has been much better. Not consistently much better, but better. And I don't know if that's Hawk. I don't know if that's RuPaul. I don't know if that's a lack of something from Primus Tornado. Um, but Primus Tornado is behind the eight ball uh, when it comes to planning, I think. Ram is strong. That's why. Sigma was only played because bad. I, I don't know why Hawk is playing Sigma, to be honest with you. I don't. I think this might be a first fight choke cheese where because it's so hard to like push in this choke that you just abuse Sigma spam here. But Sigma is not, this is, Sigma is not good in Brawl when there's not Bastion being played. <clears throat> I cannot tell you how many times I've had to answer this question. Why is Sigma, why is Sigma good in Brawl? Because Bastion. Bastion's not very popular anymore. Bastion's not very strong anymore. There's no reason to play Sigma. Ramatra, Ram I say. Ramatra is terrible into Bastion. <clears throat> and Ram is very good versus Sigma. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah. Why don't we see Widow here? Um, yeah, she's too easy to, like, she's, she's okay here. But the Sojourn angles are really, really good. And Sojourn has a much better ultimate, I think, at least at this level of play. I think Sojourn in general is just a stronger comp. Did I talk about the comps I play in Dorado? Yeah, we talked about that. Basically, high ground, different reads on the dive spam variant. Exactly. Yeah, it's terrible beyond the hallway fights. May is the genesis of all these comps. Time to rethink this hero. No, I totally disagree. I totally disagree. The, the, the May is that the, the, this is just May. The reason why this feels so bad is because remove the glass. This map is this map is terribly designed on the choke point. All they need to do is remove the glass, and this map is fine. May is not even the gen the must pick character in brawl maps a lot of the time. Um, if anything, it's Lucio, right? Is 
Is Arista still the soft counter to Ram? No, 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 no. Arista, Ram and Arista is pretty neutral. But Ramatra is much better against the other characters. She's consistent in almost all comps since 5v5. May, I'm not going to lie. I have no idea what you're talking about. May is not even a must pick in a lot of brawl compositions, much less spam or dive. A minute, two minutes. This is the nature of the first fight. Sigma is. And, and I think Sigma has, has a lot of potential in that kind of circumstance. Y'all are just a victim of Sigma. recency bias because May was good versus Bastion and May was good versus Sigma. Everybody's on their hate train for May now. And same thing with Ana, right? I remember when... You know what? We have, here's, a, here's a fun segue. Let's talk about who is Satan for at least a couple of weeks in Overwatch history. Since Overwatch 2, let's talk about it. Who is the new problem? Well, obviously this hero. Um, let's, actually, let's actually zoom back a little bit here. Hello? Thank you. Who is... This hero is literal Satan. This hero is currently literal Satan. Um, this character, literal Satan, also Satan. Um, this character, Satan, with the uh, hinder changes and with, but when they reverted his fall off. Um, definitely Satan, early on in beta. Uh, Satan, first round, uh, season one. Definitely Satan, uh, for extended periods of time, once uh, dive stuff got nerfed slightly. Definitely Satan, was definitely Satan when they buffed her uh, sustain. <clears throat> I mean, it is just Satan. Uh, first season of Overwatch, literally unplayable to play anything but Kiriko. Um, people just hate him, but not literally Satan. Definitely literally Satan right now. Uh, definitely literally Satan for quite many periods of time, especially when they buffed her where she healed more when they were under critical. Uh, definitely literal Satan. Uh, definitely literal Satan on the initial buff. Uh, let's see here. 100% Satan has been Satan now twice. Uh, Satan... Unplayable, the only playable tank. Although people, most people are a little bit nice. Satan multiple times. Um, Satan multiple times. Uh, the new, uh, um, when all the DPS are bad except for Sombra. Very, very satanic. Uh, maybe kind of sort of, people just don't like these characters in general. So we'll share a Satan. Um, do, 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 do. Satan, you guys remember when Zarya was literally the only tank that you could play? Could change two bubbles together. Uh, 225 HP Zenyatta with a kick. You guys not gonna remember that, but yeah, a lot of lot of Satan, a lot of Satan worship here. Yeah, everybody, everybody, like here's the thing is what here's what it brings out when it brings people out of the whenever something is strong, whenever somebody's strong, it brings like the the people that like hate that character really bad out of the wood, woodwork, and everybody freaks out over it and just forgets. Like everyone's like, oh freaking Ana, like literally the most fundamentally imbalanced character has a cooldown that's an ultimate. And guys, Ana was unplayable for months in Overwatch 2's release and was not meta in Overwatch 1 for years. For years. So it's not saying that Ana doesn't need to be nerfed. I agree. But people come out of the woodwork and say things like fundamentally imbalanced and is the love child of Overwatch. They refuse to nerf her. Just like nonsensical stuff. When we literally just, we literally just had a meta in Overwatch League where Iliari was so strong that she single-handedly shut down Dive from being playable at the highest levels. You know, so it's like, yes, Ana is OP. Nade is a problem, especially in 5v5. But it's like, there's like no in-between at all. People like fly off the handle. And the same thing happened with damage as well. It's like, yeah, I don't, I don't know. It is, it is. Yeah, people now, like people are saying that Ana is like a new school character. No, it's like, all right. You know. There's no, there's no like sort of, there's no, no sort of noise. People, people just like getting angry over stuff. And then every, the new thing to get angry at is the worst thing ever in you know, and so if you're not angry at the new thing, then there's something wrong with you. If, if that 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 may or may not also be a social or social economic or political statement as well. Um, I like to sneak in political commentary in there every now and then. If you're not angry about the new thing, then there's something wrong with you, right? So that's not. You know, it is what it is. Uh, yeah, yeah, it is what it is. Is for. Okay, so this is, you know, I, I basically a cheese. Let's call it a cheese from Timeless, where it's a. I won't say a cheese. It's like a. It's a fight strategy, uh, where it's like, you know, it's a, it, it's one big choke. You spam. You maybe win the fight. It's just a nasty. Like if this was taken out here, 
What the Romacha would do is he'd rotate with his team and push the Sigma, but because you can't really do that, because you'd have to walk through this tiny little choke, it's not really doable. But it's just basically a, 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 a first fight strategy. And I have not seen the start of this map, but I'm going to assume that it's going to be a nice, boring fight for quite a long time until somebody hits a shot. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, they just need to remove the glass here. Remove the glass and not be able to contest from high ground. Well, we're now 30 seconds, 35 seconds. They are walking forward. Hydrant has rail. That's a big moment. Maybe something dies here. Wall, spam, controlling space, don't take damage. The big thing here, the thing that really sucks about this is because you can't take any off angles, what ends up happening is basically either an icicle is hit or a rail is hit. And that's pretty much it in a nutshell. And so what ends up happening is both backlines play like absolute cowards because they don't want to be the guy that gets railed or shot in the head. So we're now 45, 50 seconds. RuPaul is out of position. Yeah, RuPaul gets a little bit cheeky and gets headshot. And, that, and that's exactly what I'm talking about. Stalemate for 60 seconds, and then somebody gets shot in the head. Now, surely Hawk swaps, right? Maybe Hawk stays. Because technically, there will be more fights in tunnels. Ooh, especially with these trades. Especially with these trades. Where was RuPaul this fight? Or uh, Seeker? Every single time, Kaluj wants to step up. Right side. I don't even know where he is. I think he might have gone in backline. Yeah, he's like on an angle still. He just jumped up to the window there. Yeah, <clears throat> that's crazy. Hydra gonna. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm I'm looking forward to it. So they're gonna stick with the Sigma because the fight's still gonna be in the the choke. Rock is pretty good. Like Sigma's not terrible versus Hermatra. He's not very good, but. You can, in theory, rock his, his nemesis form. Um, hello? Hydrin? Sir? Where is Hydrin? That's, uh, that's unlucky. Um, I just hate this map so much. It's not even a bad map, that's the funny... I mean, that right there is why, like, Sigma really struggles. Because you get walled, and... and he, even though he hits the shots on May there, I mean, maybe he should have gone for the Rock and Ramatra. But, like, you just get punched and frozen right through your, your shield and your shift. So it's, like, it's just not a good character. Like, this is why, like, this is why Sigma is just generally not a very good brawl pick. If there's not a Bastion, there's just no reason. There's the Bap window. Because of that terrible trade for Timeless, they're able to, like, actually live this a long time. Like, it's actually crazy that Primus Renier basically just lived a 5v4. Or 4v5. There's the flux. They're going to use double ramble. This is what I'm talking about. Why does he... Like, this is just a terrible, terrible annihilation. I'm not going to, I'm not going to sugarcoat it, guys. This is just not good. This is just not good. He gets fluxed. <clears throat> he pops his annihilation, but the flux is still there. And so he just gets freaking fluxed in the air. And so now you've used, again, two ultimates for the price of one, and I don't know why. So then Vega is able to pop his beat a little bit later. Sugar Free... Who does Sugar Free Blizzard? Does he hit the, does he hit the back line? No, he hits Kaluj somehow. Really should not be happening there. Kaluj should have gotten out of that. And Kaluj just freaking dies. I don't understand this this annihilation from Kaluj. I, I freaking hate the the Sigma here, obviously. Um, but we've we've already beaten that horse, so it's just I don't I don't understand the annihilation. There's there's absolutely no rush for it whatsoever. I have no idea. Great rock, Sam dies. Hawk gets to cover. Seeker dies from a nice little push there from from from, from Primus. They should be able to save him. A lot of healing resources pumped in. Primus tornado, guys. Primus. I really hate that I have to pronounce that so clearly. Um, <sighs> yeah, I just, just again, again, it's like a classic. I mean, this is a classic tornado moment, right? Where it's like the blizzard is not terrible, but it's it, it just really starts with that annihilation. It really starts with that annihilation. Um... It's, bad. it's not just not great ult usage. It's just not great ult usage. They actually go to that fight and they use five ults to three and they lose. Five, right? Yeah. 
Five balls to four. We'll say four because both windows were used about the same time. Nothing sticks. Hawk on the SIG, it's working out. It looks tenuous though, frankly. I mean, he really is on a knife's edge with some of these survivors, right? There's so many moments he could easely go down. Primus? Scary spot to be on SIG. Well, they don't end up getting the leads, sadly. I'm just gonna keep... Sugar Freeze trolling the lobby. He really wants the lead. I don't know why he's trolling the lobby for the lead here. It's pointless to troll the lobby for the lead because it's a lead of 22 meters. It doesn't matter. This is stupid. Sugar Freeze gets his ice block forest and my brother is dead. That was silly. Silly, 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 Sugar Freeze. Blech! Not the level of play you want to see. When they choose to run the Sigma, you know, just a little bit of a, a subtle shift. Lenny was <coughs> getting a little too silly with it. There's a BAP window. Hydron gets absolutely smoked. You know, what's actually funny... Wait, that's a rail. I was going to say, I was going to say, you could actually abuse the, the BAP window for like a one-shot with your Sigma primary fire, but that's not even a primary fire. That was just a... Uh, that was just a rail. Body shot rail. Now the question is, do, does, does Primus Tornado go back? They actually use Sojourn Ultimate. Wow. Again, this is where like the Sigma feels really bad. This is because you just struggle to like actually push through the choke to clean up these fights. So in a fight where you, you've used an ultimate, you got a man advantage. You can't really finish it. You can't close. You're not good enough in close distances like Ramatra is. So you have a really hard time like finishing that fight out. Um, that's the the certain ultimate. We'll see if Timos would like to fight on the high ground. I think in the end. You think this will be the average level of play? It depends. I I think I think the other problem the, the other problem here is that like the the level of the problem the fundamental problem with Western contenders is that if they don't scrimmage each other, there's not enough good players to have consistently good scrimmage practice, I think. I think this is early in the meta, of course, but like you look at these players, and I'm not going to lie with you guys, there's like two good teams in NA, or three good teams in NA, and that's it. Three. So unless you, these guys are like just like, like incestually scrimmage each, each other and only each other, I don't think that they're, like even if you, like who else are you going to scrimmage? You know, and the same thing happens in Europe as well. Like Europe has like two or three good teams, right? So Europe, just in the EMEA region overall, like three teams, if they're not like cross scrimmaging each other, there's not enough good scrimmage practice to like actually develop, I think. So I think that like there's a chance that the level of play is going to diminish. I think also because the, a lot of these guys aren't necessarily doing this with team houses. They're not doing this with as high level of a coaches. Um, for uh, many of these teams, I just think the level play is going to diminish a little bit. It's not necessarily a bad thing, though. It doesn't mean for a bad viewer experience. It makes for a slightly less good viewer experience for me. But even when I'm sitting here and watching casually, I don't catch most of this stuff. I just enjoy watching. Jake said NA is the best it's ever looked. I mean, compared to what? Compared to what? Toronto Defiant in scrimmages? I mean, the bar hasn't isn't set very high for NA. You know what I'm saying? Compared to what the 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 what was the start of Owl season that one tournament? You know what I'm saying? So it's like I think I I just I think this this isn't I think the overall level of play for NA and EU players teams is going to diminish a little bit. Like there will the London Spitfire players are not going to have that level of team play. I think even the Toronto Defiant, even though they weren't all that good. Probably not going to be performing all that well at like the macro. But it's just because of the number of teams that you can scrimmage is going to reduce. Because the, when we, in the Overwatch League, you had players from Korea, teams from Korea coming over and scrimmaging in the Western Hemisphere. And now those teams and players have gone back to Korea. And even if you're like, even if you're like a total Bazo Hopium in a you know, fanboy. Even if the NA players are better than the Korean players, which is, I would not necessarily say is true, but, you know, whatever. There's fewer good teams to scrimmage because a lot of those teams have gone back to Korea. So there's just, you're less likely to be able to only scrimmage good teams nowadays. It's not because ONA and AU suck. There's just, there's just fewer teams. It's kind of like, you know how like uh, the APAC region was always like, it felt like a little bit behind the, a you guys remember, like the APAC teams were just in general, not quite as good. They're just not. Um, 
It's the same problem that NA and EU teams are about to have, where they just have fewer scrimmage partners. So um, because so many of those teams went to NA, APAC region fell behind in scrimmage practice. I disagree. Al's existence really dampened the potential of NAEU to develop properly. I don't know. I have no idea. I'm speaking about this from like a strictly right now quality of practice approach. I have no idea if it's going to make it more healthy, the overall scene healthy. I, I agree. I think Overwatch League was terrible, but that's, you're kind of like, you're kind of not, not intentionally, but you're kind of straw manning my argument. Like I'm talking about the practice quality. I'm not talking about the health of the esport indirectly helping the level of the esport to grow. I'm talking about the quality of practice right now. There just are not a good enough players. Now, will they de players develop? Potentially but I don't, I don't know. Nobody can really know that. Spark demonstrated? Maybe. Spark was an exception to the rule, I think. Spark was the exception to the rule. And Spark also played a lot of teams that played patty cake with them. Um, the Korean players have a tendency to ego dive, which is really stupid. If any of the teams had played normal comps, anti-dive comps, I think Spark would have struggled more. Yes, I watched some of them play, yes. But I, but even if I, I even I didn't watch enough to know. But the thing, the thing is, even just from this game, these these are the winners. This level of macro is not Overwatch League level. But I will also cut slack and say that this is this is early in the meta. But I anticipate even without even if I had not even seen this match at all, I anticipate the level of play to just diminish a little bit. Hey, young humble, thanks for the sub. So we'll see. It's just my impression. I'm not saying it's fact. Changes your strategic incentive. You don't have to force anything. Flux. Oh, oh dear. Changes your strategic incentive. You don't have to That's force unfortunate. Flux. I need to hit one person. <laughs> no, I didn't watch Korean flash ops. With the speed boost, a little bit easier to do that too. I miss from Hawk there. Completely juked out. With the speed boost, a little bit easier to do that. What's happening here? We miss Flux. He hits the May, which might have forced Ice Block there, but Sugar Free just freaking dies. He might have been reading Ice Block, but yeah, he gets burst quickly. So that, that's a disaster for Timeless. And that's going to set you back a long way. That's going to set you back a long way. That's a very cheap fight win for a Primus Tornado. Primus didn't lose anybody. They were able to push it towards the lead. And with Primus, every single time they've managed to win these Yeah, bad Blizzard, bad Flux. Hawk has to swap now, surely. Ha surely, surely, surely. No, he stays. Weird. Very aggressive pops here. This is, this is the most Primus Tornado. This is the most NA thing you're going to see, guys. Check it out. Just push, 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 push. They com combine ram push up through high ground with Sojourn on the angle. And again, it's not a bad fight plan. You know, you have a lot of ults there, but you got to be careful of the beat here. Uh, will it work? No. So then they'll beat, then they'll blizzard. They do catch Sugar Free though, yeah. So they 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 blow the kitchen sink, but it wins. Leno, I have no idea, no idea what happens, what's come, what's going to happen next. I had somebody from involved with Overwatch esports. I, I'm not, I won't say who, and I won't, I won't leak anything. Um, I did have somebody involved with Overwatch esports reach out to me and ask my feedback on a tournament format. Um. So I, there's definitely something going on behind the scenes. But I don't, I don't, I don't know. But yeah, I mean, they, they blew the kitchen sink. I, I, this is, okay, so let me, let me be very clear. I am like classic NA, classic NA, classic NA. But classic NA is good sometimes. I don't mind it here because it's a situation where they want to get lead and so they're going to be at a map control disadvantage because they don't have high ground. So they're willing to blow a lot of ultimates to secure lead and to win this fight. So I actually think here, maybe we could talk about execution. Like, I think it'd be honestly worth leaving Cart there for a second to help make sure Hydra can hold high ground. Um, but I, I think it was a, a reasonable fight. To, I think a reasonable plan from premise. 
but it's not always good. You have to set it up. You have to understand the situation, right? What did I answer? I mean, I would have to get more into the details of what they're trying to do, which I I don't think I should say. It wasn't anything major. It was it was just some some structural stuff. Which, to be honest with you, I had to tell the person I was like, you know, I'm not like the wizard when it comes to like formatting and stuff. So I just gave him some feedback. And they're walking up into a potential amplification matrix from ultraviolet. Very scary. Extremely, but he just needs to get the angle. That is the slimmest angle I've So I am not paying attention to whatsoever what's happening on my screen. They get cap, Lucio over. Permissorio holding really early. That's a that's a little bit of an ambitious bap window. Seeker's not getting support though. If so Seeker gets support there, I think Primus Tornado is in a bad spot, but um, they're able to... Okay, yeah, Hydron, Hydron dies there. What happens here? Okay, so he slides, but he's unable to... He kind of gets pincered out in the open, doesn't, he's not able to slide to cover. They will punish that. RuPaul gets punished though, and that's a much better trade. BAP is way more valuable than Sojourn, having some sort of main support there, and they're able to catch Timeless. Timeless is, is looking a little lost in the sauce. <laughs> None of the hope and the optimism, yeah. Yeah, so so Timeless is is reeling from the from the missed flux and from the missed blizzard and then swapping comps. They still have it, 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 I mean, how long has it been, guys? They still don't have Blizzard, they still don't have the tank ultimate. Um, they didn't really set up Seeker. That, like, the, the, the moment that Timeless could have won this was right here. If they had had better setup on Seeker on the off angle, this is where they could actually win this. Um, especially when they also get the kill on Hydron here. Like This is where I think Timeless is kicking themselves a little bit. I don't know if there's a little bit like too much of a panic. It's a really nice shot from Sam, or not from Sam, from Ultraviolet there. But like, you know, you, you, you gotta want this back. So ti Timeless fumbles the ult bank and then wins and loses a very winnable fight. Um, by the way, I want to remind you guys, do you guys remember that push is fundamentally imbalanced video from when Overwatch 2 released? You guys remember that? You guys remember the critiques of push and how push is a terrible game mode and all that stuff? The one that proved through math that it was fundamentally unbroken. And then I made a response and was like, actually, no, it's actually, you know, you can have complaints with the map design, but the mode is actually extremely snowballable in the, in the opposite direction. So, you know, in many of your, like, it was basically, it basically is saying that, like, no, you're exaggerating, your math doesn't, it doesn't line up. And turns out that push is one of the most reverse sweepable maps. It's way more, way more reverse sweepable than Koth. Um, Koth is actually the, and then I had statistics from a bunch of tier two, uh, analysts message me and basically were like the first fight win rate. He was basically saying, if you lose first fight and push, it's, it's Jover. It's if you lose first fight, which was total horse crap. And then I had the numbers to back it up from hundreds and hundreds of rounds afterwards. And it was actually control where that was applicable. And yet nobody, well, people weren't making big videos about control. Um, yeah, anyway, I just find that funny that that's kind of like faded off into the mist of that. With that, we were talking about like who were the big bad guys. Push was the big bad guy for a long time. It was the the worst game mode ever. Literal Satan, can't even unplayable. And now it's just kind of like, you know, there's still people that don't like Push, you know, and I, I think there's some complaints about Push that are very fair, but, you know, it's, it's like it was the boogeyman for so long through math, facts, and logic. And, you know, well, they can definitely make miracles happen again. Annihilation available from Kaluj. It's such a devastating point to put it on too, but a Oof, that's a bit of a mistake from Kaluj. Again, these 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 annihilations like right here, he's using it for the armor reset, right? But he has to be a little bit faster there, and he's just not quite fast enough. And that's a crucial, crucial, crucial mistake. Because if you look at Prime, uh, Primus Tornado, they're in a good spot to win this one. I don't know if UV also didn't have Lamp there. Uh, yeah, the Lamp was late as well. Because you look at that fight there, and if, if Kaluch plays that one just a little bit better, the Lamp comes in a little bit sooner, this gets to be a big, messy ult fight, which it really favors uh, Primus Tornado right now because it's better than using one ult for one ult, and that's freaking it. Are you kidding me? You would like to see you know this, and then answered by this, and then answered by this, then this. And then they beat in response, and then they have to use, you know, they blizzard, and then maybe you get a kill, and then maybe Hydran gets a headshot. Like, it, it, this is a, it's an individual error from the tank and the support line, 
that's going to cost them. From Sugar Free, just throwing out that Blizzard, stopping Kalusha's march on forward. Right, that's the thing with push, it's like... Meters to 43 and 43 without a check yeah, I agree. The, the maps yeah, are just not always super amazing. The whole concept that, oh, you don't make any progress when you win a fight was just so ludicrous to me. I'm a little worried for him, right? Ults for both teams, you know, I think a lot of these fights, you need to not just win, but win clean. Do what Primus Trinita was able to do a few times, which is not allow any trades late right. in the fight. And that's so, so difficult to do, especially when Tyrus, Primus, all, they know all they have to do is trade. They don't need to, like, force some sort of dominance. Because you need less progress than you do with other modes. That's the thing. They can just defend. There's the early wall, there's the BAP window. I, I think this is timeless knowing they're pushing into Blizzard and just 3 2 one NA. And I think this is again where like a little bit of the NA mindset isn't a bad thing. Where you know that you're like, hey, we're, we're, we're kind of at a disadvantage here in terms of the Brawl ult here. We don't have May ult. So let's just 3 2 one and see if in the Norse, I think they actually focus the, the, yeah, they focus OG here who has beat and they catch him. And not only that, because they go so fast, they actually dodge, um, yeah, they actually dodge the mail. So Sam gets caught with his pants down. Vega gets frozen, but that's a mistake from Vega. Vega should not have been frozen. Yeah, Vega, Vega screws up badly. Um, but... But this is this is where again the NA approach there was smart. They knew that they didn't have Blizzard, so they had to do something a little bit chaotic, and they make it work really well. Maybe a little bit of an over ult there from Timeless, but also a really important fight to win. So I think it's okay. Bush is probably my favorite game mode to watch. I think it's just. I think it's the fact that it's so unpredictable, you know what I'm saying? Like it there there is a little bit of unpredictability. I think if anything, the imbalance is the uh the OT spawns are a lot more a lot more impactful with push than they are with other modes, you know? So you know it's a blessing and a curse. If there's any like and that's that's why I say it's like the one imbalance thing about push is the fact that it's actually ironically more reverse sweepable. The first fight matters, I think, less than a lot of other modes. Yeah, it, it's just the psychology of it. It screws with people, right? Um, RuPaul's gonna go Kiriko to come back and touch. Uh, Primus is in a decent spot here to, to win this with the beat engage. You're probably gonna be looking for ice block and beat engage onto the May. It's gonna be your easiest target. So you want to see a good uh, wall trade, push trade from Kaluj onto the May, and you really, really, really need to see that ice block. You see the ice block, you can beat engage. Um, and really, for, for timeless, they need to play like it feels bad because you're so far behind, but you honestly have to play like super passive. I think you, I think you need to control angles here. I think you need to be shoot like abuse your Kiriko mobility, right? So like, you know, you could see a play up top left here. Um, it looks like yeah, that's what they're doing. I mean that that's pretty much all you could really do. Miss the wall, but Hydran's isolated and Hydran gets picked off. I do not know where Ultraviolet was. I do not know why Ultraviolet was not able to pocket that, and I also don't know why Hydran did not have a slide. Yeah, he does use his slide there, but he doesn't really go anywhere, and then he stays. He moves forward. Yeah, he egos and just doesn't get pocket. That's just a, that's a communicational error of some way, shape, or form on that off angle there. That should not have happened. Ice block is also huge. This buys Timeless more time. Now, Timeless can kind of play underneath and chill now. There's Suzu, though. Timeless pushing really hard here. There's the beat. There's the blizzard. Hawk is frozen. Kind of a misplay from Timeless here. They had to know that these ultimates were still on board. I think a little bit too greedy there. Great beat from OG. Sam's going to be able to wall off. I think Haw I think, I think Sugar Free actually freaking kills his own Ramatra. Um... Yeah. Maybe a little bit of an over ult from Kaluj, though, is the only thing I'm thinking. Oh, no, he has to to save his life. Okay, so he would have died without it. Okay, so messy from both teams. But again, I think it's one of those situations where it's like some of these ultimates look reasonable in isolation, right? The wall is like fine. The May ult, I think, is fine. But you hate that you had to use beat. You hate that you also, I think, I think, here's the thing. I think you can't bap window this. I think you can't bap window this. Hydra was calling for supports to help him hold that. Yeah, that's a, that's a big troll by the supports. I don't know why there was so much support onto uh, Kaluj on that push. 
because Kalu- there was no way that Kaluja was going to be pushed with the way that the background timeless was positioned. That's where uh, OG and Ultraviolet need to be thinking more like Vega and RuPaul with how they positioned and controlled it because the off angle was more important than the tank fight there. But yeah, this is this is a bad bat window from UV. Um, and this is the, again, this is the classic thing where like Primus Tornado wins it, but it's like, man, somebody had to be able to communicate this and, and avoid the, the, the quadruple ultimate. Um, because Timeless really did not play that one well. And this is where people were like, oh, they shouldn't have pushed, they shouldn't have pushed. Bro, they, 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 they're, they're touching. Timeless, they've made it work before with the Tracer, right? These last second contests, but it's a little bit scary. I mean, they're, um, they're going to get the contest. They're going to get the overtime, but you've got to actually win fights and your comp is starting. I don't think, honestly, it matters all that much, to be honest with you. I don't really think it matters that much, to be honest with you. To get weird. You do have Katsune Rush, though, coming up. And My one... I would say it was probably, okay, it would probably be better to not push cart so that you could hold high ground and take the fight on high ground. Because I don't really think that you gain an extra fight with the OT respawns if you lose. So I think I would prefer to hold high ground and shoot cart instead of take the fight in the choke. I don't think taking the fight in the choke, but see, I say that, but you also have the May. And fighting in this choke with the May is pretty good. I, I don't know. I, I don't, I don't, I can see either way. They would have 100% made it. They would have 100% made it. Tracer's already respawned. She's already used three blinks. Look at where Tracer is once they turn the camera here. Wait. She's already here. She's sitting still. Tracer and Lucy are already here. And she has two blinks right now. So they would have sped boost to here. They're gonna get the and then three, two, one. They would have touched from underneath, which is really, really hard to stop. Yuriko would have TP'd. They would have touched. They would have touched. And it wouldn't have been too much of a stretch because Hawk, everyone would have actually rotated through here instead of rotating through here. This is a more direct path. My, my thing is like, do you want to shoot cart from high grounds or do you want to take the fight in the choke with me? Because the problem with taking, oh, like, because you're like, oh, we take the high ground. Well, the problem is, is that they have Kiri Tracer. You know, like that, that, that's, that's pretty scary. High, like that's not a guarantee, oh, you win high ground. Like Tracer has a free flank up the high ground. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. I don't know. The first fight, you've got the olds to work with. The question is, can you deny these trades that Primus have been so good at fighting? Well, here comes the overclock from Seeker. This is the guy to do it. This is the guy you got to look for. Sugar. It, it, this is the this is the team play gap. You look at this. This this is this is inexcusable. This is inexcusable from Timeless, or from from Primus. Look at this. Seeker pops Sojourn Ultimate so early that I'm pretty sure Adam and Eve are hanging around. What should happen right now if you're Primus Tornado? What should happen to Firmus Tornado right now? Come on. You guys have seen enough Overwatch League. Just kite. You're you're look at how there's look at how far away they are. Look at the number of chokes. Nobody's using anything. Like, this is the freest Maywall disengage. And yet we just sit around. Well, here comes the over- look, 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 we like Kalu just even kind of like half pushing. And then just Sam just walls late. Sam dies. And Kaluj holds a lot of responsibility for this as well because Kaluj is screwing around as well. This is really bad. This is really bad. This is the nerves. This is the, the, the fumble. I don't know, you know what this is, but it's bad. And it, it is absolutely unforgivable that they lost to just, just lost to that. Like that is ridiculous. That, that, like you talk about like how many bad things are about to happen if you're a Primus Tornado fan. That one is underrated for the worst fight of the entire series. Actually unforgivable. Not like you, you guys remember the uh, grand finals of the Shock and Dallas Fuel back in 2022 when Dallas Fuel was making Shock look absolutely ridiculous with how many ults they were kiting out. This is not even, this is, this is not even hard. This is not even our, this is like diamond level. Guys, they pop Sojourn ult. We don't have any ultimates. They're a million miles away. Let's just not peek it. And yet they're like, they're shuffling around. And this, this is, this is unforgivable.
Cannibal feel that their opponents choked. This time they're up against Vets. Primus Tornado, they've got to bridge the gap to get their ultimate. And it's such, such a huge deal, deal you know, because now all of a sudden time, and this is the NA hive mind, right? Where you have ultimates, you know the enemy team doesn't quite have theirs, you know you have to win two fights, so you might as well gamble. And this one is an educated risk. This is where, like, I don't want to be seen as an as a, a hive mind hater. It's just situational. And it's well executed. It's like the JFK. It's well executed. I mean, it was, it was a, it's a good play. Now that obviously RuPaul dying there kind of sucks. But yeah. Yeah, no Kiriko though, so it's all on. And the Moira swap is is funny. I, I guess Moira's technically faster, but you do you do lose the teleport. Uh, so it is it is faster, I think. But you know, actually, I'm not even, not even sure it's faster, guys. I'm really not even sure it's faster. I'm kind of surprised the Moira swap. Wait, UV swaps Kiriko. That is a very strange choice. I don't like that. I don't like that swap. I don't like that swap. I don't think it's necessary. You don't have anything that you really need the Kiriko for. Uh, you know, maybe if you're like looking at a fight where they have mail and you don't have anything for it, but they don't have <laughs> uh, even the tracer. Like I, I think, like you know, obviously the Kiriko does a little bit better versus the tracer, but this is like this is like <laughs> play BAP. BAP is I think the best support you could play in this situation. One nasty big choke, got a Maywall. You have your lamp. I, I don't. I don't. Why did they push the bot? <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I think I think Tracer is this. I think they pushed bot because they wanted to take a fight in the choke with Maywall. I, I I think they wanted to take the fight in the choke with Maywall, but then freaking Seeger pops Sojourn old like at three o'clock in the morning Overwatch time. Kasaurus, please tell me, tell me why they did not kite this. Tell me why they didn't kite this. Tell me why they didn't kite this. It, look at where the, how far away they are. Tell me, why did they wait so long? Why did they push up? It's just, it, it not, oh, it's just, it, 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 I don't know. So anyway, Moira versus Kiriko, I honestly don't know. You'd have to go in the workshop and, and, and test it out. Um, and this is really freaking good for Timeless. Um, there's the early Rammel. I think that's just to get the extra armor. Um, because they still don't have Moira back yet, I don't think. And he's just basically discouraging them from pushing. Somehow Sam already has his ice block forced, which is really quite unfortunate. Suzu's also forced. No. And then they're just, they're just thinking beat push, I think. I think they're just thinking beat push. Or the thing is, Sojourn ult push. He doesn't find the pick. I must disengages. OG beats. Uh, I don't know, man. This is just, this is, I, it's very easy to hindsight this. Because this is like, this is the kind of thing that we're talking about when we're like under pressure, right? But again, it's just two ults are used, and all we're shooting is a blocking Ramatra. All we're shooting is a blocking Ramatra. Then Vega comes in with the beat. Vega builds that beat pretty fast here. You know, he, and Sam also commits the Blizzard, but it doesn't catch anybody. I'm telling you guys, it's the ult game. It's the ult game. It, Primus Tornado, when the, when the push comes to shove, they do not win the ult fights. They do not win the ult fights. I know we've talked about Primus Tornado or Timus digging a hole for themselves in, in the ult fights at points in time. But when it come, push comes to shove in these big ult fights, Primus Tornado choke every single time. Every time. It doesn't matter if it's Sojourn ult. It doesn't matter if it's if it's May. It doesn't matter if it's Kitsune or Bap Window or Ram ult or Beat. They choke it every time. Every time they, they mess it up. They've just used one, two, three... Four ultimates, and they have nothing to show for it. Now, time is just trying to step nothing to show for it. And I, I, and I, I don't think this is like a an understanding thing necessarily. Maybe it is. I, I think this is where you could really look into like the psychology or the communication or the leadership or whatever. Because you just need to freeze one person. You just need to rail one person. Not even headshot, just one person. 
force a cooldown, chain that into your mantra, ultimate, it's over, right? And it's just, this is where, like, Primus Tornado, over the course of these, what is this, six maps now? Oh, this is awful. Um, have just lost so many massive old fights compared to Timeless. I mean, I don't even know if it's just Kaluge. I mean, I don't, I don't think you can really blame any any one person. I mean, especially without like knowing. I mean, you'd have to listen to the communication. I don't have. I mean, I haven't listened to the streams, honestly, guys. You'd have to listen to the streams. But it's, it's this is this is you can't do this. They're cheating setup to an extent, yes. But it's also like it's not even cheating in terms of like they're rushing the setup to an extent. They're doing that too. But they they're not like they're using like three ultimates at the same time, or they're or they're popping an ultimate and they don't even know why. They're just doing it because it's an advantage but they don't really they don't have the discipline to like this is what's doing or or even the kiting the ultimate there's like there's a lack of like decisiveness you know um they're very hectic i mean yeah i i don't know like and it's basically what all hawk is doing is just absorbing 17 trillion different ultimates i mean even the fight when they lost you remember when primus tornado won the fight before last you know um it, they dumped like four ultimates into Hawk, you know, and Hawk dies, but it's four ultimates, guys. Like it's, it's that's the kind of stuff that that's happened. Um, like you have to have, you have to know what you're trying to accomplish with your ultimates. You have to be able to like, you guys have seen my layers video, right? That's what they need. That's what's missing here. That's what's missing. It's the layers. It's this to force this and then this to finish it off or this to force that ultimate and then respond to that ultimate and then respond to that ultimate. That's why teams like Toronto, Dallas, and London were really good in the Jungle Queen mirror. Because they layered really, really well. You can't just pop shout and kill the backline, you know? And that's exactly what we're happening here. Even with like the pick potential of Sojourn, like there's so many fights where these like getting these massive ult dumps and yeah. No excuses here on Antarctic Peninsula. I don't even think it's a decisiveness. I, I think like at, at times Pr Primus Tornado's decisiveness has been more of a more of a harm than it's been a boon because it's it's been a lot of like the NA hive mind at inappropriate times, right? Um it's not decisiveness. They just don't know how to, they're just not using their ultimates. They're not layering their ultimates. They're overusing. Um, they're comboing. It's like, uh, you know, the, the, it's like the, the, the diamond players that only know how to combo. I'm, I'm exaggerating a little bit here, but you guys get what I'm saying. Why do they win this? How do they win this? Is it a slower rollout? I think it's a slower rollout. Yeah, I think they TP. Do they TP? Yeah, they TP. Okay. Poise? Yeah, maybe. Poise? Yeah, I, 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 don't, I don't know. I haven't worked with these players enough to know what the problem is. We can diagnose the symptom, you know, but you can't like, Such a strong point you know. for me. So many of these small chokes. Yeah, you, you just got to play it. It's too good. It is too good. Especially the sidelines too with the bath. It goes kind of crazy. As long as you can kind of get control of the point and these little columns on the right hand side. Weird shield from, I don't like these shields from Kaluge. I don't see the purpose in the shield. He doesn't get enough damage out of it to justify it. But yeah. So they're gonna go to point. Hawk is gonna stand there and hug himself for a little bit. Um, Maywall is okay-ish. It's an angle from Sam there to poke out Hawk, which is all right. Um, but in the meantime, sadly, like the only problem with this angle from Sam, maybe, is I don't know. Like, you know, you know. Okay, look, I, you know, the more I'm looking at this, I think that there's a lack of creativity with some of the support positioning from Primus. So, like, you look at this here. Let's 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 analyze this for a second. Lucio Sojourn are married, right? You know, say what you will about that. They're married. They're not going anywhere. All right. And this means that it's really hard for them to remove the Sojourn from this angle, right? And so Hawk obviously doesn't have as much support. But if you look at like. OG's positioning here for a second. Yeah, you heard it here. They're married. I'm, we're, we're shipping them, right? Or is that, what they, that's what, is that what it's called? What the frick is OG doing? What, what the actual frick is OG doing? Right? You talk about this. Like, is Kaluj going to push this? No. Why on earth would you push into the Ramatra? Ramat just going to beat each other up? It's like a pillow fight. You know what I'm saying? So like... The problem here is this is like, this is where I think the level of, I mean, not the under understanding, but sometimes the level of creativity with the positioning is missing. And so what ends up happening is then like, you know, they can't like ultraviolet jumps up, 
ultraviolet gets sucked, hydrogen gets sucked. And so now instead of like having like a stalemate on high ground where it's kind of like, you know, maybe you can pocket your May. Now all of a sudden we've just lost high ground. And I don't, I just, I don't even know why. And so now look at Vega, look at Seeker, right? You guys see it? And now ask me which Ramatra is going to be taking more damage. You know? Right? Like, it, Sugar Free whiffs his wall. <laughs> like, actually just straight up whiffs his wall and somehow still Timeless feels like they're in a better position. Um, so, you know, say what you will about, like, Timeless fumbling some of these things. But I do think, and Vega honestly kind of feeding sometimes. Um, but I do feel like the, the, the synergy between these two guys and controlling off angles has been s something that Primus has missed at points in time. I just released a video on it today where it's like, it's tricky to find that balance between like, you know, push and pull, you know, you need your Lucio speed to push in, you need your Lucio speed to kite out, right? If your Lucio is, is with a sojourn uh, on an off angle, he can't speed your ram in or out, especially when you're like kiting ultimates. But in a first neutral fight, I do think controlling these off angles is really important. Um, and I think like, this is like assuming, like you have to be happier with your positioning here. And, and there it is, right? You have to be happier with your positioning here. I mean, look at me. Come, come on, dude. There's a sojourn on top of my Baptiste in the back line. And I, I, and I think that's what Primus is missing. I do not think they understand the macro of this composition. And the thing is, is it's not even like, oh, you have to sit there and analyze it. I just think you need to like, ha this is why you need your supports to be a lot more flexible with how they play. A lot more proactive, a lot more DPS mindset oriented. Um, Admiral and Sparkle in the flank version too. Exactly. That's exactly what it is. It's the same thing. And not only that, but you're doing RuPaul a favor because he doesn't have to worry about Hydrant on the high ground because your Sojourn is on the high ground. Um, at the very least there, you'd expect kind of a stalemate, you know? But yeah, no. All right, what do we got here? Uh-oh, uh-oh, chat, 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 chat! We got, look at it, look, 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 they're mirroring, right? Bam. Sojourn, there's lamp, Sojourn slide. Now you control the off angle. And even though they built ult first, you have better map control and you haven't even had to use an ultimate. Apparently they were listening to my coaching guys. Yeah, brilliant, brilliant job, brilliant job. I, no, 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 why, 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 why? Cause, cause here's the thing. Ow, frick, um, dude. They just won this angle. They won lamp. That's Sojourn Sly. Just chill right here. AFK. Ultraviolet. Hi, kitty. Ultraviolet will pop BAP window in like a nanosecond. Blast this out to kingdom come. And then you can obliterate people from the off angle here. All that for nothing. Ah, so annoying. It's actually super risky to do this as well. You could die doing that slide. I don't understand. They must be thinking about like doing like a speed top with bap window, but I don't think that's necessary. You control the off angle, just bap window for main. And uh, yeah, this is stupid. Ugh, come on, guys. This is not good. Because this is the thing is when you don't control the off angles, it allows Timeless to be able to kite the ultimate out, right? Timeless here can just wall off. If they just wall, where's wall? Sugar free, sugar free, sugar free, sugar free, sugar free. Sugar free needs to wall this. This is sugar free fumbling the back. Maybe he's an ice block. Sugar Free desperately needs to wall this right now, even if it just gets broken by a Sojourn because it's going to buy them time. He's going to do it in a second, surely. Surely. Yeah, see, see, that's the problem. It's like, you know, all that, you had a huge advantage, and for what? You know? Oh, that's a huge miscommunication from Timeless. Because look, they're going to push with Beat. They're calling Beat Push, Beat Push, Beat Push, Beat Push, Beat Push with uh, Sojolt. But the problem is, is that Sugar Free goes a little bit too early. So he gets his Ice Block forced and then cancels Ice Block to get Beat, but he doesn't get it. <laughs> and then OG mirrors with Beat, they mirror with Sojolt. And then now they're going to push top left, but now it's like, you know, stupid error. You have all the map control in the world and it's a stupid error. Yeah. Yeah, so that, that was pretty poorly played by Premise. <laughs> awesome alliteration. Uh, but 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 Sugar Free fumbles the bag a little bit there. A little bit of a mistimed push there with the beat engage, and, and that'll do it. That's unfortunate.
It's the funny thing. Uh, like, tear Gunka. Pray a little too hard. You, like, decide okay. how you're going to... Gonna... That's crazy thinking. Uh, ugly, 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 ugly. I don't know about that. I'm cooking a little too hard. Going to be able to clear top, though, uh, in theory, especially if they can force ice block here. Sam drops. There it is. Okay, great. Slow approach for timeless. So backline is rotated all the way opposite side. I like that position from Hydran. Uh, Sugar Free is going to drop. They're going to try it. Hawk's going to push out that angle, which is good, but it is going to cost his nemesis for him. There's a wall there, a little bit of an early wall. It's a pretty decent blizzard, though. Uh, it catches Hydran without slide, and they will get the kill from that. that that's, that's really, really nice here. I think what I would have liked to have seen from Kaluj is more of a pincer push. So do you see how Kaluj reaches around and matches here? I would have liked if Kaluj had instead gone for backline instead. I don't like him matching the May. That's how you get yourself frozen. Um, Sam as well has missed a lot of blizzards. Is anybody from Timeless frozen? Hawk is. Okay, so maybe that one was okay. Um, but then they caught, they popped the rampage. Yeah, it's just a better setup from Timeless. I really like that Hawk. Again, I want to point out what Hawk does prior to the engage. He sees the squishies. He forces the off angle out. Hydran has to slide back to his team or walk back towards his team. And actually, that might have actually set up the blizzard. Did he actually use slide there? Yeah, he does. Yeah, there it is. There's the slide. So there's the slide, and they wall. And the wall is honestly just so he can rotate, and then he chucks blizzard in. And so the blizzard catches Hydran. And the thing with catching a squishy is it's not just, oh, you know, I killed a squishy. The other thing is that it takes so much more resources to keep Hydran up here and it and, and creates, and, and Hydran not shooting is so much more valuable, you know? Um, and the other thing too is Sam misses his freeze on, uh, he tries to catch both the May and the Ram. So there's not a lot, a lot of follow, the May doesn't end up getting frozen there, but yeah, anyway. Um, yeah, that was unfortunate. What actually happened to Kaluj? Does Kaluj just not pop ultimate there? Does Kaluj get nuked? I don't even know what happens to Kaluj to be honest with you. I'm not sure. I think he took. I think he took the wrong approach. I think he should have cut off backline as well there. But yeah, really, really nice shot from Hawk. Like that's the kind of stuff. Ba -ba -da -ba -da. Um, but yeah, I think I think the key thing there is that like um, Hawk clearing out that angle is, is really nice. Victory off of it, and it's so scary because that Maywall can always come up. Enemy team just speed boosts out, and you end up just sitting there with the window, and there's nothing to look. Off angle setup. Is there any pocket? Yes, it's a whole team pocket rotation. They clear high. What will do? What will? What will do? I say. Check this out. This is super cute. This is super cute. This is the kind of stuff that I think Vega and Seeker were doing. So, do you? What would? What did uh, Primus Tornado do? So when they got pushed out this way, they kited towards this side and they took this angle on point, right? Which I, I think was fine. I think, you know, it obviously didn't end up working out, but it wasn't, it wasn't a bad angle. What, look at what Seeker does. They just press S. They back up towards their spawn. They know that somebody from Primus will have to touch point. So it's a 4v5 now, right? And so then as they're touching point, or as they drop the point, Lucio and Sojourn wrap back around to take the high ground. <laughs> they actually just go right back. And they just use Maywall to buy time so they get back there. And in the BAP window, Lucio Sojourn on high ground. It's a lot of ultimates from uh, from Primus, though. I, okay, so, okay, okay, so chat. So chat, do you guys want to guess what goes wrong here for Timeless? There's a problem. Do you guys see the problem? One of these things is not like the other. One of these things just doesn't belong. I don't remember the rest of the lyrics to the song. Okay. Can we see if Vegas speeds early? I don't think you could. What's the problem? So Hawk is all the way down here. He's avoiding BAP window. Hawk has positioned find. Oh, come on. Remember, remember what, what has Timeless been popping off from? What has, what has been Timeless' key to success? I think the windows are both fine, honestly. I think the windows are both fine. So watch carefully. Look very carefully. Where is Seeker? You see it? 
And also, where's Sam? So chat, where should Vega be? Where should Vega be? Come on, you guys are the Lucio. You guys are GM Lucio players. All of you, every single one of you, right? Honestly, I could see if, Lu if, if Vega's here, Sam dies. If Vega's here, Seeker kills everybody. Where is Vega, chat? He's shooting through a bath window at a blocking Ramatra. No! 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 And what this means is that this BAP window would be toast because a speed pocketed, even a BAP pocketed plus speed sojourn annihilates this back line. There's abs it's, they are cooked. And even if they don't annihilate them, every single one of them has to look this way, which means that Mr. Kaluge does not get healing and RuPaul and Hawk kill him. So Vega, as good as he's played in terms of controlling these angles, fails it once, and it really, really screws up this fight. It really screws up this fight. Like, Seeker is not allowed, Seeker ends up having to slide back to his team, guess why? Why does Seeker have to slide back to his team? Because Hydran comes over here by himself. By himself. So give credit to Hydran. Very important play right here. But Vega trolls it. Vega hard trolls it. And, and, and while we've been picking on Vega here, right, can we also point out, <clears throat> just to be fair, <coughs> that where's OG? Hello? Taking a bit more. You, you guys have to understand the value of Lucio here. Lucio is what's going to allow Seeker to absorb chip damage from either one of these three targets, also provide his own chip damage, and then most importantly, not allow people to get rid of Seeker. This is where Seeker, this is where Lucio is powerful. You guys are thinking like, oh, Lucio doesn't pocket anybody in the flank. You're right. Lucio value in the flank is one of the weaker things. It's still good, but the reason why it's powerful is because when Lucio is with somebody else, you cannot push to get rid of Lucio. This gets, gets reddited, and Hydran has to slide back to his team if Lucio and Sojourn are here. The missed opportunity. The big missed opportunity. And in even not even if, this is, this is where it would go as well. Either one of those. Very important. So both Lucio is very passive this fight, and a lot of missed opportunities. And I, I think that's a problem for Timeless because... Uh, they're the they're the ones that had the ult disadvantage, right? So, like, you need to control through some sort of space. And even here, right, like, now it's just an RK. It's just a mechanical, like, who can hit the shots, right? So, and, and that's that's unfortunate. The mistakes cancel out there? I mean, yeah, absolutely they cancel out there. The problem is, is that Primus had Hydrant hit two body shots and, and Seeker hit one. And so then you leave it up to just who hits the shots. And you know, both teams had an opportunity there to win without having to let it get to that point. Yeah, I was going to say they should be able to brute force this. I don't like this rotation. I don't know why I'm talking in the creator, but I don't like this rotation. I think just going co-side normal, forcing this rotation through here is totally fine. Brute force it with your mail, with your uh, with your beat. I don't know why they went through here and did this weird, it's really kind of a weird rotation from Timeless. And I, this is really ugly because you're opening your back up to getting off angled. The reason why this rotation is good is because everything's in front of you. When you do this rotation here, like a snake, you're getting shot in the back and from the high ground. I, I, this is really messy. Really, really messy. Yeah, they beat and gauge as well. That's a terrible beat. I do not like that beat engage at all. I do not. Oh, this is terrible. Oh, this is terrible. I don't even know what they were beating on. 
Ah, uh, it's just a beat to cover a bad rotation, maybe? I don't even know. Like, Sam hasn't even used Ice Block here. So they're chasing. The Blizzard's there, but the speed boost is there as well. And they get right out of it. Ah. Uh, and that's, that should be it. Like, Sam just has to accidentally... Oh, maybe not it. The Seeker hit a shot. Okay, again, I want to look at setup here. I think this is, like, in the chaos. Who is able to keep their... Their, their, their wits about them. Seeker on the angle. Seeker kills OG. What is OG doing? OG's just... I don't even know what OG's doing, man. Like, o OG... I think he's trying to contest the Sojourn. But then chooses not to. He really should have contested the Sojourn. He actually died because he rode away from the Sojourn out to the open. Um, but I, I, I don't... Yeah, it's just too many ults, too much high ground. UV takes high ground. Yeah. Oh, Timeless have to want that one back. That that one is... Um, I mean, this is just stagger pushing. Like, that... that uh, uh, that's, a, that's a fumble. Again, is this a TP? Like, what's going on? Timeless TPs. Weird. The inconsistent amount of respect being given here. Shield. It's well timed shield from Kaluj there. Gonna allow him to hold the corner. Hydrate time. Thank you. Very nice Maywall. Um, and getting this corner first is really important because it's really easy for Kaluj to live. Can you guys even see that? It's really easy for Kaluj to live. But. It's really hard for Hawk to live if he goes here. So I actually think once they get this corner here, I actually think it's almost impossible to win this high ground fight. Because then they're just like, oh, we wall now. Hawk is dead. Hawk should die. Um, yeah, I'm in lamp. And then you have all the high grounds in the world, and it's just over. On to define OG run New York Celsius OG. I mean, acting as if those are any significant difference here. Just because the records differ doesn't mean the player's different. I mean, everybody getting him a second chance will play a little bit more confidence. Now, the interesting thing here to know is that Timeless drops Ram and May. You guys notice this? This is really smart from Timeless. They drop their Ram, but Primus drops both Ramatra and May. So what this means is that they win the Brawl fight on point, but it's really hard to even get a good wall here. But what this means for Timeless is as long as Hawk can just live, these four are going to obliterate the high ground. And again, if you've noticed the consistent theme here, that Timeless more often than not is better at controlling angles. More often than not. Is better. It's, it's, it's how they're winning these fights. Um, now I don't know how Sugar Free dies. Sugar Free goes really hard on the enemy May. He still has Ice Block here. He just doesn't use it. He doesn't use ice block. Okay, that's uh, that's unfortunate. And Sam is still living, so it's like it feels like a collection of like individual errors. I don't even know how. Like, and Vega overextends for the kill and dies for it. So it's like it's like individual errors that Premise Tornado are punishing really, really nicely, but the setups from Timeless are better. Bap window early. Probably worth it. It's a 3v4. It's a good angle for it. It's still winnable. Um, they need to be able to catch OG here. Or at least by time. Bap window going to be coming in from Ultraviolet. Again, I really, really, really want to see from time Timeless clearing out the space again. You're not going to win the fight on point. Especially with that Bap window. You have to contest from behind. And they don't. And so then they lose. Um, so In fact, it's actually Sam who does a really good job controlling high ground by himself. But Vega is too busy pulling. I mean, I don't even know what Vega is doing here. I think maybe they're thinking about speed boosting Hawk out, but even that's not clearly not happening. At the time, the level play here is not super high. Uh, you think they run it back after this tournament or rake apart the core? Uh, I have no idea. I, I think it depends on what the next tournament. I wouldn't be surprised. I have no idea. I have no idea. That's more of like a personal decision. They obviously played pretty darn well. They almost won it. So it, it's really anyone. anyone can. Are you my friend? Oh, yeah, absolutely. You're BFF, mate. Sleepover is still on, right? You still doing the sleepover? Um, are they going to push top? 
Okay, so they say, okay, we're not going to push top. We might be able to catch. Hydron's on the angle here. Does he have speed boost? Where? Where's the support here? I think he just ends a little bit, maybe. I think he had Lucio Pocket. <clears throat> I think he had Lucio Pocket there. <clears throat> Sugarfree misses his ultimate. <clears throat> yeah, he doesn't place his ultimate near deep enough. Um, you gotta place it like right at the Ramatra's feet, and then Sam gets a much better ultimate after Sugar Freeze used his ice block. And then he's freaking dead. This ult game is really, really messy. I'm the Sugar Free crucially misses the Blizzard. Kaluge needs to die here. Kaluge needs to be frozen. If Kaluge is frozen, this fight goes a little bit differently. Um, and crucially here as well, this fight has gone on for 75 trillion years, and there's still a crewing percentage in the to I think if you're timeless, I think you try to brute force top. In this entire tournament, timeless. I think you try to brute force top with BAP window. I don't like how timeless is playing this as much. I know Maywall is scary, but when you have the old advantage there. I just don't think the angles that are not Tigron are that good in this map. You guys kind of see what I'm saying? Like, this angle is just not that good. Like, it's just not that good. You need to try to fight for Tigron, either with your own BAP window or whatever. Because what's happening is that this angle is just not doing enough. But the good news is that if it's not Seeker, Seeker's creating enough chaos, then Vega's literally just ratting on the back line. And to be fair, Seeker did hit shots. But, yeah. I, I wouldn't have minded a little bit more of a brute force attempt on top. Because that, that felt a lot shakier than it needed to with the old advantage that they had. Forcing point. Both teams kind of jockeying for space. Early Nemesis form. I must very aggressively holding high ground though, so I think uh, Hawk is fine. Yeah, so Hawk, see, this is what I'm talking about. Like, Timus is aggressively controlling that high ground, and so it doesn't matter if Kaluge is able to get a second, uh, a, a better nemesis from him. It doesn't matter. It's like you force ice block, you force spam, you're walking out of choke. The Bay Wall is good. Kaluge should die. Even if Kaluge doesn't die, you should still be able to hold this high here. Like, you should just go hunt Hydra in there, honestly. They do. They push him out. Again, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. There's the Lucio Sojourn Mirror I was expecting more of. Hydra misplays a little bit, but does get the Mega. Ooh, the ultimate use, but they don't track beat. Oh my gosh. Talk about clutch. Huge beat from OG here. Huge beat from OG. And and this is what it comes down to. It comes down, it comes down to like who's able to win on that angle. The only problem, which doesn't really honestly matter all that much, <clears throat> is Timeless has one, two, three other ultimates. Dude, what happens on main? So the beat is actually huge. Like winning the 2v2 with beat there versus Sojourn Ult is 100% is, is worth. Question what happens on point? Suffering? Oh, Kaluge doesn't get his reset. Kaluge doesn't get his reset. Ultraviolet is forced lamp? What is Ultraviolet lamp? I don't know. Ultraviolet misses his lamp on Kaluge, who needed it. Sam also needs lamp or support. I, I don't know what was happening on Brawl, on, on main. Why did Seeker ult there to win the 1v1, to win the 2v2? It was okay as long as they didn't have beat. <clears throat> but Timeless won the, the brawl fight on point. Because somehow the, the lamp wasn't there and they didn't have a... I think also as well, like, Sam 
Pops Blizzard a little late, but I don't know. It's been a while since we've had a purely NA tournament, but I mean, come on, this is the closest. Was it throw it on Hydrant OG? Oh, okay, okay. I wish we had replay codes, mates. I'm not gonna lie. I wish they didn't get wiped. Again, advantage to Hawk because they have the corner hold. Like it's really hard to push top when there's a ram up here. I think you have to pressure point and then try to push pot because having the ram stuck in here is like so hard. So it means they always have the better May wall. <clears throat> so there's the May wall, shield's broken, Kluge has to drop. And then that allows them to push the, the core without the ram. They over push though, they're beat engaging, they need to get on the back line, they do catch Sam. Now they just need to live. They don't live. <laughs> um, RuPaul does not get beat. RuPaul does not get beat. Alert, alert. RuPaul does not get beat. And they push, they maybe over push here because Kaluge ends up catching them isolated here. Yeah, really nice catch from Primus Tornado. The, the May Wall is really good. The May Wall is really, really good. The Kite is also really good. The Freeze really only catches Sam. So they stack, and this is kind of what I'm talking about, like where this is a little bit of the NA hive mind right now, where they use double ult here, and then they end up losing. Because the, they have Kaluge on the angle, backline safe. 3 2 1 pushing with an ult advantage is not always going to win you fights. Yeah. Yeah, re really, really, really nice setup from, time from uh, excuse me, Primus Tornado there. I think Timeless looked noticeably worse on some of their setups on that map. I don't know if they've had less practice on that map, um, especially that particular round was not, was not near as good. Alright. Here we go. Final map, ladies and gentlemen. I guess any questions really fast? I guess we could take a quick pause and ask if there's any questions. Because we, we've gone a long time without <laughs> opening up the floor. Overheat map after Colosseo. Oh yeah, 100%. Huh. Who is getting better value with the walls, do you think? Mm, I don't know. I, I think they've both been kind of hit or, hit or miss. I think both have been okay. Both have been okay. It's been hard to say because a lot of the fights where I think the, the walls have been the most impactful are the ones where we can't actually see the walls. What's my favorite fruit? Mm, watermelon, probably. It's a little bit basic, but you know, it's 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 not a bad choice. I think nerves are playing a huge part. You could be right, yeah. Definitely could be right. Who do you think was MVP in this series? Um, I don't know. I think RuPaul's played pretty well. I think Seekers played pretty well. We'll have to let's wait. Let's wait till we see the final map. Till we see. Should I try to pocket my surgeon offing on the ranked or focus on speeding my tank? Uh, if you, it depends, depends, depends. A lot of it, the time that you're noticing that the Vega is going with uh, the offing ult is when the tank isn't really in a position to push, right? Like when you don't really have an ultimate to push with or you can't really reach the back line. Yeah, I, li I like watermelon. If I, if I had like maybe a hottish take, I think I like grapefruit a lot. Um, I wouldn't say it's like S tier, but I like grapefruit a lot. And I also like mangoes a lot. So those are maybe maybe some of my spicier takes. Not exactly a spicy take, but spicier take. A seeker on seeker was on a. He swapped like Tracer to get back. Genji dash and Sojourn. Well, yeah, I like Mango. Sojourn on the angle with Lucia, and this is like a perfect example of where like it's more impactful for Lucia to help Sojourn here because the ramp. Like, what are you pushing as ram? The enemy ram. Like, there's just nothing really to, to reach that you need speed boost with. So you put your, your Lucio controlling that angle instead. Um, yeah. It's kind of funny, like you can see a slight difference in the styles where like in general, Hydran is playing a little bit farther distance and, and pairing up with Ultraviolet, whereas like Sam and OG are, are kind of working together in the flank here. Um, trying to force Ice Block here. They're unsuccessful with it. Seeker is able to catch OG. Um, 
It's really hard for me to see the setup here. Sam being without ice block is a big deal though, because it means that he, he has to play so much more passive. Um, and that's just a rail, you know, that's just a rail from Seeker. Like Seeker, even not even getting the kill, forcing that ice block is huge. It, sounds, it looks like Seeker builds another rail and gets a kill on OG. I think Seeker's played pretty well. Like the easy answer is like, oh, Seeker because mechanical character DPS in the kill feed. But I, I mean, he's played pretty well. Like he, he, he's, I like the angles he's taking. His ultimates have been pretty reasonable. Even his body shots have been pretty impactful. Um, Banana's the best man. That is a take. Uh, Ram rush meta because Ram is strong. Ram is strong. That's why. Ram got giga buffed. And Bastion is not as strong as he was before. So you can play non Sigma brawls. Sigma brawls. <laughs> anyway. Um, crazy that they're able to hold this here, actually. It's actually crazy that they're able to hold this. Um, the wall is... I don't even see where Hawk is, actually. Did they miss wall? They might have missed wall. This is why when people ask me, like, who had the better walls? I don't know. I can't see. So I have no idea. It doesn't look like it was a very good wall, though. So then, then they... Pop um, Nemesis, and then, yeah, I don't even know where Sugar Free was, and then OG gets caught in the rotation here. I just, just, just want to see what's happening. It's a really nice Disruptor shot. It's crazy to me that they're able to win this high ground here. It, it, it maybe it looks like Primus Tornado is a little bit out of the loop about how they want to kite this, but yeah. Very, very, very nice hold there. Ramatra ultimate? Kaluge? Was Kaluge going to die? No, I don't know what he's doing. Nice boot from Vega. Really not a good ultimate from 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 Kaluge at all. Um. Nah, there's no way he did it for HP. No way he did it for HP. I'm I'm watching this here. His positioning, he's fine. You gotta trust your supports. There's only person that was shooting was Ramatra. I mean, yeah, it's fine. It's just a, it's just a tournament. The, the codes got wiped because of the patch, which is annoying. But you know, um, Vega needs to be really careful. Nice bap window. Nice may wall. They force ice block. Seeker gets smoked. Seeker. Seeker is ca caught out of position. But Timeless still has some brawl ults to work with. Ooh, is Sam? Sam needs to be careful, no ice block. Sam walks forward, they ult him, and he dies. He panic blizzards. They beat. RuPaul's frozen, gets pushed into blizzard. OG does not have beat yet, though, crucially. Then there's the, there's the Ramatra ult, and that should be the defining factor. Hydrant pops his Sojourn ult, though. They're able to live it out. Maybe not. Maybe not. Seeker should be back, though. He's looking for Seeker. Can he catch Seeker? Seeker is not there. There is the later beat. Hawk might be able to live. Then there's the Sojourn ult in response. This is the layers that we wanted to see earlier. Hydran gets caught with his pants down. He slides the wrong way. Um, yeah, I mean, major thing there was just that I think Sam gets plays a little bit too aggressively with Ice Block there. Uh, so he gets basically no value out of his Blizzard. Um, Oh my gosh, this this is I freaking I, I anybody who thinks says that they enjoy Ram Rush is gaslighting you. If anybody who says they unironically like Ramatra, cut them off from your life. C call nine one one. Just 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 don't ever speak with them ever again. They they I, I think there needs to be like a Geneva Convention thing against like Ram mirrors. This is just so boring. Uh, good positioning from Hydran there, holding the high ground. I mean, it's really hard for Primus Tornado to lose this because they do are able to consistently hold the high ground. They don't have to worry as much about cart. Um, um, Sugar Free does build his ult. That could be huge. That could, that is huge. Yeah, they they catch. The thing is, the thing was with these messy ultimates, uh, these messy ult fights, is that it's often if if both teams play it like really really well and they like sh jockey back and forth for positioning and stuff like that. What ends up happening is somebody builds an ultimate mid fight and people just don't know who it is. And then they lose to that. You know, like I guarantee nobody was thinking Blizzard at that point in time, you know?
just old after old, and these fights are so uncomfortable. It, it, I, I just think rush mirrors are so boring. I'm not going to lie. Ryan's, unless the tank is like really fun to watch, it's just so boring. Joker Queen is tolerable sometimes because she's fun to watch. Ryan is tolerable because he's fun to watch. But man, it's just, it's just such a boring thing. Okay, so Seeker on the angle with Vega. Shocker, we've seen this before. They pop Sojourn ult. There's the beat. There's the lamp for the beat. But the difference between the last interaction we've had with beat and Sojourn ult is now Seeker can actually kite it. Like Seeker's not actually in a position to get rolled. Then there's the later beat. Which is kind of odd, honestly. Like, um, I think they were trying to force something with it. I don't really know why they beat engaged. Um, I don't like it because uh, Sam can just ice block it out and live. Uh, I would have preferred a little bit more patience there from Timeless, to be honest with you. Um, and they are going to get counter walled, and they should get blizzarded here or ram ulted. Yeah, and there it is. And I think this is something that that uh, Primus Tornado is going to be happy about. Not just because, hey, you know, they're able to push back in and, and win, but because they also have the high ground here. So I, I think that beat from Vega was not very good. Um, nobody was under severe uh, duress, I think. I don't think Sugar Free was Sugar Free an ice block, maybe. Even then, I think you need to greed that as much as you possibly can because all they got out of that beat was a little bit of space, a little bit of an ice block, and I, I don't love it. Um, yeah, I, actually, really nice, decent layer push there from Primus Tornado. So, it, it's you know what's funny, guys? It's literally coming down to which team is going to either accidentally. Or on, or on purpose, have proper layering. Whether it's one ult for the other ult for the other ult for the other ult. Whatever team does, it's going to win. That's very important in Brawl News. We've been talking a lot about angles and map control, but like a lot of the push-pull, the team that push-pulls properly in a Brawl Mirror is going to win. And that fight, it was timeless. Or, uh, Primus Tornado. It's a good play. So it looks like they're going to try and rotate. I think, yeah, they're going to try and rotate this way and then push up and take the fight from there because this open space is really rough. But Premise Tornado is not going to let them. Premise Tornado is going to hit the rotation immediately. Nice shot from Hydran. They're going to come in Blizzard as well. Uh, maybe? I don't know. Yeah, Game here. Amalgam here, we'll have to wait and see. But I, I'm not, I'm not, not holding my breath, you know. Sojourn top with Lucio. I, I think if you're timeless here, I honestly think you just need to play underneath the high ground, like hug here, play here, and just basically force them to either give up the high ground and fight on point or push card. I think that, like, you're especially when they've, they've used Blizzard, I think you could take the fight on point. Like, Sugar Free is... I, I don't like the way Thomas is playing this. They're playing this too open. I don't even think you need your Lucio Sojourn on an off angle right now. I don't think you can contest their high ground. So this is where, like, okay, the angle war is... It, 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 I think you need to be smart with this. They have Sojourn ult. You do not have Sojourn ult, and you don't have Bap Window. You have Brawl Ultimates. So you need to be taking the fight to point, Right? So what you do is you rotate your team with sh shield, wall, whatever, into here. And you do what you just did last time, but you're not going to get punished for it because they don't have mailed. So you're going to rotate, you're going to play underneath, you're going to push cart, 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 you're going to push cart. You're going to take the fight to cart, force these guys to either give up the high ground to shoot you or run in and fight you, in which case you have the better ultimates for that. Um, so this is where I actually think, you guys ready for this one? Vega and Seeker are throwing. They shouldn't be here. This is not where you want them to be. You do not have an advantage in this in this matchup versus the Sojourn Ultimate. You're either dead or you're out of the fight. And so what ends up happening is that, you know, I don't know exactly what Sugar Free did either as well, but they should be able to take the fight here, push the cart, push the cart, push the cart. And if if Kaluj messes up, Maywall plus Blizzard, he's dead. If Sam messes up, Maywall plus Blizzard, he's dead. And it doesn't happen. So Sugar Free screws up somehow. And Seeker and Vega are just in La La Land. Right, because the Sojourn ult doesn't necessarily kill Lucio Sojourn, but it completely takes him out of the fight. So it's literally a 4v3 or 5v3. So it's not, you talk about like the NA hive mind 3 2 1 push is sometimes bad, sometimes good. The super uber off angle flanking Spilo pilled is sometimes good, sometimes bad. This fight, when you have this many ult brawl ultimates and they have the better spam ultimates, holding off angles like that is really stupid. It's really stupid. 
not having any way to so just take the fight to point take the fight to point and take short angles around point chance for thomas to clutch and sugar brown to the genji I mean, okay here we go I want to believe genji's just a this. new in the neutral fight the with a blind advantage oh i thought they might try and Sugar Free, it, it, the, 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 the blade is just a, hey, let's, let's see if we can make a pop-off moment because they're going to have beat for beat. And so there's going to be a point in time where Sugar Free will be able to get to one of these squishies without beat. I don't know what Jake is riping about, but I actually I actually don't think it's a bad idea. There's no, you don't really need the May Wall for anything here. There's no BAP window. Um, there's no, I mean, e even this, like, like, like right there, there it is. They're trying, they're trying to Ajax. Let's see, the play, that was the play. The play was the Ajax. They weren't even waiting to beat engage afterwards. And Ultraviolet, by the way, does not have beat. So the Ajax almost works. Um, does Sugar Free just not get beat? Yeah, it's a comfort pick, right? So he dies and then he's unable to get out. Yeah. I mean, it was worth a shot. It was worth a shot. You've been stuck here for like 75 years. Um, it's still winnable, by the way. Still very, very winnable. Vega dies. Vega should not have died there. You never want to see your 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 Lucy in the kill feed to to Ramatra. And and Seeker really not finishing a kill here. Oh, huge blizzard from Sam. Yeah. Okay. Uh, not not a great push from Timeless. Um, I I think a little bit too cute. Uh, layering from Primus Tornado in terms of the ultimates was was much better. Uh, some of the off angling from Timeless, they didn't really have a plan for second point. I think. Comes the comp, comes the position. They know what to expect. It's about brawling it out from here. Who can get the first now, interesting. Timeless is also putting their Sojourn in the back. Oof. Oh, Pixel. Pixel. So here you're just gonna die in card. And they're holding close, by the way, because if you're playing a composition that doesn't really benefit a whole lot um, from like holding perfect positions and you have Lucio's speed, you can take like extra fights by just fighting and dying on card and then recontest in high ground afterwards. Now the question is, will Timeless be able to clear this high ground? Because Primus Tornado was unable to. That is a good disruptor shot. That is a good shield. That is a good angle from Seeker here. That's what you want to see. Wow. Oh. Forces BAP shift. Nice little angle here. Notice that he's also doesn't need the Lucius support here because uh, he's he's basically playing a position where he doesn't really need a lot of healing. He's got a lot of cover, right? So, And then the Lucius is really useful at booping the people off of the high ground. So they actually win the high ground trade, which is something that Primus was not unable to do as quickly. So... Now, I like this. I like this. Um, you don't really have any ultimates. You're kind of popping off, going for a, a flank play here with the bat window. You look at this here, and, and Timeless could, could could just die here. Like, Timeless could very easily die here. Yeah, yeah. I'm curious to see... OG needs to help. OG needs to help. OG needs to help. Oh. Where is OG? It's tough. It's tough. They have the high ground. The BAP window we've left behind. Haluj is a little stuck. But I think Ultraviolet's okay. Sam also drops the Blizzard on point. It just... Hydrants... This has happened a lot of times. Yeah, I, I know. I agree. I don't think it's purely an OG either. But this keeps happening. Where Hydran ends up on these angles, like Hydran also should have shifted back towards his team. Hydran needed to shift back this way. If Hydran shifts back this way, he's fine. But this has happened, I feel like, a lot of times. It happened, we saw it in Coliseo. It happened on Antarctica. It happened here. Um, I feel like it happened elsewhere too. I can't remember. Um, where Hydran's on an angle, doesn't play his escape cooldowns well. Does not play his escape cooldowns well and doesn't get pocket on the angle and dies. This happened a lot. Like we talk about Seeker and Vega kind of going the opposite extreme, maybe a little bit too much, you know? But now it feels like Hydran doesn't get consistent pocket. Here comes the blizzard, so and it's Hydran doesn't get consistent pocket and he also plays like he's getting pocket. That's the problem, right? Like you could look at that and be like, oh, could, could he have gotten pocket? Yeah, but he could also have played more conservatively and shifted back towards his team. He acts like he has a mercy pocket sometimes with the angles that he takes when his support line is generally a lot more passive without the position. 
to be had either. Freezes, Hall gets frozen. Um, back room and no Sam. Mail first, though, from Sam. So he is going to kill Hawk. High ground is reattained though. We've got a lot of off angles here. Sugar Free is close to mail. Does RuPaul have lamp? I don't think he does, but he does wall himself back up again. And OG gets roll. Who killed? Is it RuPaul? I think RuPaul kills OG here. Yeah, he does. He lands a nice clip on OG and then Vega finishes him off. But yeah, this is just like much superior positioning for, for Timeless. Much superior, I say. Good. Mayo just in time, and that's going to be a hold. I think it's both. Yeah, I think it's both. It's just, a, it's just, a, it's just a playstyle thing, you know. Like where Hydrant gets a little bit sloppy, you know. And OG in general, I think, is really lacking creativity. Not again, not not that time necessarily, but overall, you know. To take this final contest for the grand finals than Seeker and Hydron. Both on their so they're going to take the high ground rotation. That's a better setup for Sojourn here, right? And we talk about like, what's the better play here? Do you want to play for the brawl? Do you want to play for the poke mirror? I think here you play for the poke. I think you play for your angles. I want to see Vega and Seeker working together this fight. Risky for Hydron there. He's going for it. He's going for it. He, they want the, he wanted the Ajax there, is what he wanted. He wanted the Ajax there. Um, Seeker, what does Seeker see? Seeker sees, I think, Ultraviolet by himself. Beat is popped. There's the lamp into the beat. Huge play from the supports of Timeless. And so I think now it's going to be UV with the window slap versus Timeless in terms of who has the better positioning. And so they, because of the window, they give up high ground and they lose the angles. But oh, RuPaul has the window and Hydran just gets one shot body shot. Wow. That's actually just a crazy shot. That's not even really a mistake from Hydran because he's also shooting through back window, you know? You, you couldn't even see Seeker there. But that's insanity. Uh, and you guys are overthinking it. I, I, I think that, that that fight was more of... I don't know. The only thing I could say from this here is this is where I think, again, you could have a situation here where... Okay, chat, I want you... From what you've learned from this review, from what you've learned from this review, I want you to orchestrate Primus Tornado's setup. Orchestrate Primus Tornado setup right from here for me. Tell me, tell me where they should go. Where should they be? Because Timeless has to give up the angle, right? Because the BAP window, right? And, and, and they're all on the floor. So what do you do? It's, this is the heat of the moment. Very hard to do this for Primus Tornado. But optimally, if you could analyze this, what would you do? I expect too much? Uh -huh. Go and spawn and cry? No, 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 no. Come on, guys. Yeah, exactly. Exactly, Varashi. This is why you guys trash talk Discord moderators. You know why they're so out of shape and so neck beardy? It's because of the big, massive brain. Yeah, exactly. You jump right here. You shift across here with, and you put OG up here with Sojourn. And you make this BAP window really uncomfortable. And as soon as that BAP window expires, Thomas is in a really hard spot. This is like one of the situations where there's like an emphasis of shooting through back window, but I actually think it would be fine to just take the position instead. Like OG's even doing it by himself. You guys see this? Like OG's already considering the angle by himself. Like set up your Sojourn and Lucian behind and, and I think they're cooking. So that's where you would need to do a little bit of Vega Seeker stuff, you know? Be a little bit creative. Take the positions around the window. What is May's primary job in this comp? Pressure the enemy in Ramatra and not get your ice block force. <laughs> Pretty much. You control angles if you can, but it, it, it's hard to contest a Sojourn sometimes. Greedy? Um, no, I mean, I don't know. What's greedy? You know what I'm saying? Like trying to get too much. You could also say that like taking the off angle that I described could be greedy, right? It's a little bit aggressive. It's the wrong type of greed, I would say. Perfect. With this speed boost, you've got to get your teammates out of the freeze. 
Timers truly are the clutch. The window hadn't come out? Of course it had. He's sitting there. Even with the, even with the BAP window here, even with even before RuPaul pops BAP window, even more reason to take this high ground up here. Even more reason. Yeah, 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 yeah. Maximize the current situation. Yeah, yeah, that's true. I, you have to kind of like take the BAP window as like, okay, we didn't get a kill with the BAP window immediately. Let me take the, the, the space. That, the, this is something you guys need to be doing in, in your ranked games too. If you don't get immediate value out of an ultimate, take space with it. You know what I'm saying? What, are you, what kind of indirect value are you getting out of it? Because if you back window and stand exactly on top of the back window, you're missing out. Um, well, this is tough. They're, now they're taking the angle, right? Now they're taking the angle. It gets cleared out. Maybe it was a... How is this execution here? I think they're a little early on the angle there, but it's all right. It's the worst. Forces resources out, takes heat off from Kaluj. They go back on the angle again. Oh, Ultraviolet screws it up. That's sad. Ultraviolet gets way too close. Ultraviolet gets way too close. They get Maywald. He screws up badly. Yeah. Because actually, you can see Primus is trying to do what we talked about earlier with the Lucio Sojourn. And they have a pretty good angle. Like, look at that. They force Lamp there. Um, but... Ultraviolet gets frozen, and so he ends up having to no speed boost into Blizzard. Yeah, I think you could also argue here that like, man, you're playing for the angle. Gosh, I honestly don't know. I don't. I don't know. You could argue that speed boost on Ramatra is important, but to be honest with you, I'm not actually sure that it, it would have worked because they had to touch point. So your Ramatra is going to get frozen. Your Ramatra is 100% going to get frozen. The problem is though is that Sam gets frozen too somehow. And Ultraviolet gets frozen. Like, that's inexcusable. That's a, that's bad play from the core. Yeah, so I think I think Sugar Free was always going to freeze uh, Kaluj. There's no way of avoiding it. Um, so I don't think OG and, 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 and Hydra made the mistake here, but there's no reason for Sam and Ultraviolet to get frozen there because that, that's what kills Kaluj, right? You need a lamp here, lamp and pocket, and Ultraviolet does neither. And Sam dies with 93% on Blizzard. I mean, yeah. That's rough. Timeless earned it, I think. I think Timeless overall played better. I think there was definitely, you know, Junker Queen mess here and there, but I think I think Timeless earned it. Better macro, I think more consistent ult plays. Um, yeah. I think the only thing that you say with Timeless is you got to question, like, that junk, the quality of that Junker Queen comp on the, uh, the Sojourn Batmir. Um, yeah, great pause. But, uh, you know, I, I think they earned it for sure. Close game. Very close game. Very fun. Very enjoyable. Um, I wanted to do the EU one too, but it was a bit of a 4-0. Uh, so obviously not quite as interesting to watch. Although we, I do have some Kevster codes that we'll be looking at uh, potentially this Thursday. But yeah. Okay. 